Somebody shout hallelujah. Children of God shout hallelujah. I want you to know that the devil is around our corner. Hallelujah. And I want you to make the devil know that we are alive. So I want you to shout that name that the devil fear. Amen. Shout it again. Shout it again. Shout it again. Hallelujah. It's going to be great in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You know, the devil don't want you to go to heaven. So we must take it by force. Hallelujah. Anyway, I'm sharing my testimony. The devil would like to be there. Agent of darkness, witches and wizards will be there to affect those that want to believe and give their life to Christ, that want to give their life to Christ. So God has given me the wisdom that anywhere you go, you make sure you decree and declare. Take possession over that area, over that situation, over that place, over the heart of the people. Hallelujah. Because Satan is not a demon that plays. It means what he's doing. So we don't need to be playing with the devil. Hallelujah. So now we are going to pray just for maybe like five minutes. We are going to take authority over this, this place, this environment, your life. That you will not hear this word alone and then you go back to sin. That you will not play with the word of God. That today what have hindered you, your name not to be in the book of life. Today the Lord will roll it away. Hallelujah. His love, His love, Amen. He has risen from the dead. His love, Hallelujah. Wave to the King of Kings. Tell him, Lord, we are here. Appreciate him with a wave offering. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is, oh, is Lord. Jesus is Lord, is Lord, Amen, 
Hallelujah to that day. I said, Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah, Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah for the last time I said, Hallelujah. But hallelujah to you, Lord Jesus, this morning. of life. I am far from thee, but today you have given us power to tread upon serpent and Scorpio. I command in the name of Jesus any sin in my life, sin of anger, sin of lying, sin of love of money, any kind of sin, witchcraft, satanic power, today I bruise you in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and bruise every sin in your life. You know the sin you are battling with. Any kind of sin. Today in the name of Jesus, I bruise anger. I bruise malice. I bruise unforgiveness. I bruise worldliness. Every love of fashion. I destroy it in my life. Every power. Holy me in sin. I say today, come out in the name of Jesus. I silence you with the blood of Jesus. Every satanic hand. Holy me in sin. Receive the fire. Holy Ghost fire. Consume sin in my life. By the power in the name of Jesus. Every sin from wherever it's coming from. We send fire in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, 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 we destroy the power of Satan. Destroy sin, destroy sin. In Jesus' name we pray. 
In the mighty name of Jesus, let cover this place with the blood of Jesus. Begin to split the blood everywhere. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus upon your heart, upon your ears, upon your soul, upon your body, upon your spirit. Oh God, the blood of Jesus everywhere in this church, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus in the compound everywhere. We split the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood, the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Father, Lord, we pray there will be no demonic sleep. We take away every demonic sleep. Father, we shall be attentive. Holy Ghost, your energy shall come upon us. Father, open our inner eyes. Oh, Jesus, baptize us. Father, speak to us, oh God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' name we pray. Oh, Lord, we thank you for today. Another day has come for many names will be written in the book of life. Father, many will be drawn closer to you in Jesus' name. Believers will be strengthened, backsliders will be restored in the name of Jesus. Sinners will repent today in Jesus' name. Father, we will go home as a brand new person in Jesus' name. Father, Lord, today we will see you closer to us. Your eye, your power will come upon us. You will open our inner eyes, O oh Lord, to see you deeper. In the name of Jesus, O oh Lord. I cover this time with the blood of Jesus. I cover your message with the blood of Jesus. I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. I cover the hearers with the blood of Jesus. I come against every distraction by the devil in Jesus' name. I destroy every satanic spell of sleep. I silence them by the blood of Jesus. I pray the Lord today, your children, we know that heaven is better than silver and gold. Lord, let your name be glorified. Thank you, Lord. Take away ignorance from our sight today. Make us to know you better. For in Jesus' mighty name I pray. Put your hands together as you take your wonderful seat. I greet you all in the name of Jesus. I'm happy to be among Nyanya women. And I know it's going to be good in Jesus' name. God bless all the women leaders that you find me fit to be here. Thank you for inviting me. I'm so privileged to be here. It's a honor to be among women of God like Nyanya women in Jesus' name. I'm grateful for everything in the mighty name of Jesus. For this team, this women conference, I want to thank God for the coordinators too. Our zone owner, overseer, Pastor Adebayo, Stephen Adebayo, and all the chapter leaders, chapter coordinators, everybody here, women leaders, I welcome you all and I appreciate you in Jesus' name. I think the theme for this women's conference is Awake All Women from Your Slumber. Yes, hallelujah. Anybody that is sleeping in this time is living in ignorance. If you are in this time, this is our generation, you are still sleeping. When we mean sleeping, we don't mean the physical sleeping. We mean the sleeping of ignorance. You don't know what is ahead of you. You don't know what is closer to you. You don't know what is hanging on this wall. What is going to happen very soon. If you are ignorant of the word of God, if you are ignorant of where you die about eternity, then you are sleeping. Because I want to tell you, this is the time we need to be awake. Hallelujah. If you take a look at what is happening in the world, you see satanic children. You see the handwork of the devil. You see those that are bowing to the devil are doing everything in haste, putting things in order. Even our leaders, the leaders of the world, the people that are giving laws to this world, they are putting things in place. How they can be able to track every human being in order. So we that are children of God, we should not be sleeping by this time. We should be awake, interceding for the church, winning souls, telling people about the good news, bringing souls to Jesus. It is not the time for we to be sitting down, be murmuring that we don't have food, I am not feeling well, oh, my head is paining me, I don't know what I will do. This is not the time of murmuring. This is the time for you to awake and start running your race. Start picking race, running your heavenly race, because it's not going to be easy when the Lord will come. It's not going to be easy on sinners, on careless souls, careless Christians. You that you will be playing with your salvation. 
if you left behind when the rapture will take place, or you die before the rapture and then miss heaven, it will not be easy for you. So that's why we want you to be awake today to reality, to the truth that will set you free. Hallelujah. I'm going to share my revelation to you. I like sharing my revelation because why? It's an eye opener. Many people are not aware of these things I am saying. Some people, they know it, but they don't know how to do it. Some knows it, they don't have power to continue it. Little thing, they backslide. There are many members of Holy Mother today, they have gone back to their vomit. Some are even compromising the standard of holiness. Some women dressing have deleted their name from the book of life. Common fashion. And they are holiness people. Well, because there's, their eyes is still in the world. Fashion have deleted your name. That's why I used to tell people, please, sometimes you need to be asking God, God is my name in the book of life. How am I standing? Am I still pleasing you? Am I doing things that is pleasing you? I do that to myself. And I notice it is happening to my husband too. He prayed, he checked himself. Not that we are saying any sin in our life, but we want to be confirmed that God, this way we are going. Are we still in the right way? God will say yes. God, what are we supposed to do? Like now the conference is coming. We are praying. What do you want us to say? What do you want us to do? Who will be here? Daddy Rika pray for who will preach? Who will do this? Who will do that? Because we don't want to do something. Holy Spirit is very sensitive. Putting somebody in the wrong place and God will say, did I ask you to put him or her there? Okay, since you love man more than me. We serve a jealous God. You have to be careful how you rule your life, how you, how you run this, your Christian race. So women, because of business, because of job, where God did not send you there. Now you are working. You don't have time for God. God will ask you, did I tell you to go and look for a job? Well, you didn't ask God to look for a job. Some of you is business. Everybody is doing business. You hear your brethren, your sister is talking about, I make 100,000 profits in this. You to your ear, cut up. I start finding business. God, maybe God did not call you for that business. Now you have entered the business. Compromising have started. You started changing your price. Started doing some dubious things just to get excess money. Your righteousness is weakened. You can't pray. Only money you have to run to go and buy your business. God is all looking at you like this and say, I didn't call her to do business. This is a calling. So there are many things you are doing today in ignorance that you are not no aware of that that thing have removed you from the for your name from the book of life so today i topic my revelation the danger of ignorance of eternity the danger of ignorance of eternity many 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 souls on earth today are unaware or ignorant of eternity if it go around in the world today, go around in even Nyanya here, many people are not aware of when they die, where they will go. Some will call you, hey, there is heaven, there is hell. But many people believe that when they die, they are going to heaven. Many, many Christians believe that when they die, they are going to heaven. Including the Muslim themselves, they will tell you they are going to heaven. They will tell you all the killings we are doing, all the problems we are causing to Christians, will, Allah will take us to heaven because we are, we are dealing with our enemy. Go to the pagans in the street, they will tell you, don't judge me. I know I will go to heaven, I believe in God. But they are ignorant to many things that they didn't know that they are heading to hell. A place of destruction. Many believers calling themselves born again Christian by mouth, but their heart is far away from God. They will still tell you, I am going to heaven. I am going to heaven. There are some people in the world today, they don't even believe in heaven and earth. They will tell you that when I die, I will appear in another country and continue to live. Oh, untimely death. Ah, this person is going to live another place. They still believe that when somebody dies, or maybe a young person dies, Ah, he's too young to die. He's going to continue living in another country. Some churches believe that their doctrine is that when you die, you'll be sleeping. If you are not in Christ, you will not rapture. You'll be sleeping. That is your own punishment. So that's why you see many people, take, they, they, they take death as 
It's just a sleep. You see some people say, I am tired with life. Let me kill myself. I'm tired of this suffering. I beg, let me die and go. And it's a sinner. Oh. The person is a sinner. It's a liar. It's a fornicator. It's a thief. She's a witch. She's a disobedient woman to the husband. She's, she's, she's dressing seductively. She's not in good order. She has bad mouth. But little sickness, little stress. I beg, let me die. Let me go and rest. Who's rest? Because many are ignorant. They don't know where they are heading to. That's why they see death as rest. Rest in death is only for a true child of God. A true born again Christian. And a true born again Christian should not be wishing to die. So, many people, as a child of God, we should not be even wishing to die. Because we have many things to do for the Lord. But if the Lord says you should go home, that's fine. But you see sinners, you see youths, you see those taking drugs, they will tell you, let die. What is it to live for this world? Let's enjoy our life and die. In my country, you see them saying, this life is one, one life, oh, let's enjoy it. Enjoy it to fullest and die and go and rest. Even me those days, I used to say like this, let me enjoy my youthful life. I don't know when I will die. Let me enjoy it to fullest. When I die, it's finished. We just believe that die, death is is uh, like sleep or resting. Like when you say, today I'm not going for work, let me just rest at home. But today I want to open your eyes that you that have foxes in your life, you are a sinner. You still have anger. There are some women in Horimore, you have terrible anger. Some of you are still disobeying your husband. Some of you are still in fashion. You like fashion. Some of you are still disobeying the word of God. Some of you are still a witch. I don't know how you think you want to go to heaven or you are assigned to come and oppress children of God here. But I'm just pitying some of you that you are wasting this precious time. You know you are not clean for you to repent and give your life fully to God. You will still be camouflaging children of God, pretending as if we are all together. My dear, I'm coming to read scripture for you. We are not together. Jesus know who he is, know, know his children. Likewise, Satan knows who is his children. We are not together. Light and darkness can never blend together. The time will come when the Lord will separate us. And I pity you. I pity you. After you hear all this truth, you still believe the deception of the devil that Satan has given to you that we are going to take over this world. This world will be destroyed. All those that follow Satan will be destroyed. They will be cast into the lake of fire. So I don't know how you want to survive. How you want to live in fire forever. Hallelujah. So today, let's see what Hosea said in chapter 4. In the book of Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. Hosea, chapter 4, verse 6. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Many souls today have been destroyed. They are in hellfire. One of them are my, is my mother, my late mom. Lack of ignorance. She never knew that Islam is not the way to heaven. She believed what the parent taught her, showed her. She was bent in doing that. And now, ignorantly, she has destroyed her soul in hellfire. My father is in hell too because he was a staunch Catholic, bowing to Mary, believe his prayer in Mary. Ignorantly, I've carried many of my family to hellfire today. That is how many of your family members that have died, they are in hell today because they are not aware of this truth I'm going to tell you. Many women have died and they are in hell today because they were ignorant of the adornment they were putting on their body, that this is a defilement to their body. And up to today, many are arguing about it, arguing, say, no, I can hear it take me to hell. I can weave on take me to hell. I can come on, rapper, take me to hell. I can, I'm just dressing to look good for my husband. Ah, no, I can't dress like this. God see the heart. God, God see the heart. It's not outward. God bothers about the heart. It's ignorance. It's ignorance. I was like that. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou has rejected knowledge. You that are in Horimor, Women in Horimo, if you reject this truth, 
Because some of our brethren, they were here. Now they have left all the more. In fact, they are speaking about all the more evil. In fact, some of them are saying, ah, thank God we are now out of that bondage. They call this place bondage. We are surprised to see some women with short skirt, bleaching, palming their hair and putting powder. In fact, the way they see their sister, it is not like that. You people are just suffering yourself there. And some of you have been seeing them on the highway. Is it not so? But I want to tell you, see what the Bible says. Knowledge. Because thou have rejected knowledge, and we also reject thee. That time will come. The Lord will reject you. That thou shalt be no priest to me. You shall not be a daughter to me. When you reject this truth, when the time will come in your life, if you are not fervent in prayer and watchfulness over your soul, over your salvation, you allow friend, you allow a family member, you allow somebody that did not die for you. Hey, this is my leader. This is my sister. is not in the movement again. You allow common flesh to take you away from God. God say, you will never be my daughter. You will be out there living, but you are dead corpse walking. I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. You see what ignorance can cause? When you don't have knowledge, you will be calling God, but God is not hearing you. That's why your children will be scattered in your hands. Your family will be scattered in your hands. Because there is something you are disobeying God. There is something you are doing. Sometimes you believe, oh, me, I believe this thing they are teaching in Holy Mother. But for this one, I don't believe. There are some women that don't, they don't believe in braiding their hair. Even in this movement, they stick bob their hair. Because the Bible says women should not braid their hair. You don't even know the kind of braiding they are talking about. You are disobedient. And you are bobbing your hair. You think you will go to heaven? That's why I am here today to open your eyes. Remove that ignorance from you. From your eyes. God will forget you and your children. If you hear what I'm telling you today, and when you go out and say, no, me, I didn't believe. I don't know. Ah, no, that one is too extreme. Oh, no. Many pastors today are saying, nobody can be holy. Nobody can be righteous. God knows it's not easy to live in this world and say you must be holy. No. There is a former uh, overseer in Horimore that I've left some years ago, maybe four years ago. Now he's preaching to his congregation, telling them that uh, now he has come to know that nobody can be holy. Nobody can be holy. Because why? When he left, he thought that People in the world want this holiness doctrine. If God is not with you in this holiness doctrine, you will not have members. It's God that is with us in Holy more, convicting people to believe us. Or else, if God is not with us, who will want to come here and be say, you should not do this? You should not. They will tell you, I beg, I beg, I beg. I want to serve God with peace of mind. I don't want love. They will not come here. So when he continued, people were not coming to his church. He noticed that the church is dry. He now said, let me mix it. Give people freedom. As how other sinners, pastors are doing. Hey, leave them. Let the Holy Spirit convict them. Hey, everybody, whosoever who may come, come. Please, don't tell them. Hey, don't tell them. Don't tell them. Many pastors are afraid to tell you. They are on. They don't want you to go. Because they believe that women like earring. Women like fashion. If you start telling them, remove fashion, they will take their bag and go. If you start telling a second marriage will, will destroy your soul, they will not continue to in, be in that marriage with that, with that governor, with that senator, with that Muslim man. All they want is your titan offering. So and let the Holy Spirit convict them. Let the Holy Spirit convict them. We have gone to many churches that telling them this truth, they will tell you that, no, please, and we don't believe in restitution. And let the Holy Spirit convict them. Lack of ignorance. The danger of ignorance. The danger. There is danger of ignorance. You say this is just a common dressing. I want to tell you there is nothing common in Christianity. Anything God said do, do it. Anything God said don't do, don't do it. Don't say it is just a common powder now. It's just a common attachment. It's just a common wool. Uh, it's just a common uh, split on my cloth now. It, my skirt is just tight a little. You are, you are the one seeing it common. God knows what that little split has been doing among your brethren. 
God know that your tight skirt, what he has been doing, the havoc he has been causing in the heart of women and men that are seeing you. God know that your chest that is open when you bend down to greet a man of God, that small part of your breast that the man of God or children of God or leaders have seen, yes, sister, where do I pull eye? You don't know what that person has been battling with. But you, you are just saying, just, the neck is just open small now. What kind of thing is this? Women leader will not give us time to rest. Hey, go on, hold your neck, hold your neck. What is this? Only more self, they are too much. Yes, we are too much. Because we are the wise virgin that carry extra oil. Extra means too much. We are really too much. We are picking on you. Because we don't want you to make mistake. The Bible makes us to know that if you are fall short of one, you are fall short of all. Common dressing can carry you to hell. Lying, only lying can carry you to hell. Backbiting can carry you to hell. Anger can carry you to hell. I told our women in Suleja, instead of we taking time to be killing Satan, binding, binding, we bound Satan, we destroy Satan. Sometimes take time be binding the demon of anger in your life. Fast. Fast. Pray. Take weeks, days. When somebody asks you, what are you fasting for? You are looking lean. Say, I'm fasting against the demon of anger. You must live my life. Because anger alone is your enemy. But many of you are not here. You are not bothered. You say, hey, God, no. I don't know this anger. God will God understand. I don't know how he used to come. You have not taken it seriously. Every sin in your life has a demon that is responsible for it. If you have lying tongue, there is a demon that have attached to you that have said that you will not live lying. Is the one making problems so that you keep on lying. Is the one releasing the spell of lying in you. You will say, oh God, I purpose in my heart not to lie. But I don't know what come over me to lie. There is a demon that is saying lie, lie. Making the situation so big in your eyes. If you say the truth now, you will lose your job. Oh. If you say the truth now, hey, if you say the truth, just lie, just lie. And when you finish, go behind the corner and say, God have mercy. God is an understandable God. He can understand, he understand. And you will lie. And then we go, oh God, Father, I will not do it again. Tomorrow again, you will fall again. God, I will not do it. This is how Satan will keep you busy. Unaware. The day you will lie again, you want to go. God say, what is the answer? Turn behind. I've taken the church. You keep on repenting. Every day you are repenting. God have mercy, I will not lie again. God have mercy, you are not serious. Because you are ignorant of that sin called lying. If you know what lying can do, destroy you forever, you will not play with lying. You will always be exposing, when you lie, you will expose yourself. But because some of you don't know the danger of this sin, you see your family member committing sin, you know God said so we don't like this thing. You see your family member doing it. And you are laughing and playing with them. It's because you are ignorant of the punishment of what that your family member is doing. You will be mourning. You will be crying. You will not give rest. God save my family. God my siblings. God my husband. God my children. God help my neighbor. Help in our church. Women are inside this scene. God my heart is bleeding. But some of you, you're a selfish Christian. As long as you, you are safe. Ah, me, I'm talking now. I don't know what to do. And God will convict them. It's because you are ignorant. You are ignorant. Before my auntie joined us in the movement, anytime if I go to Seedo, I will see her with those things. I cry one day to her. I told her that, see, if you think I'm playing, or maybe you think I'm making stories. Please, if you can believe me once in your life, believe me that this year in will destroy your soul. When I'm seeing it in you, when you're coming to welcome me, it's paining me. I am not happy seeing you like this. You know why? Because as I'm seeing you, I am seeing your soul burning in hell. And because I love you, you are the only sister to my mother. When I see you, I see my mother. How can I lose two mothers in hell? The, the biological one is in hell. You, that my auntie. I am talking. You think I'm playing? You think I'm happy? When she knows I'm serious, start crying. I told him, I said, your sister is in hell. I saw my own mother in hell talking to me as I'm talking to you. 
You know the way I was living my life. I'm not happy. Joely will take you to hell. When she knew I was serious, I was serious with her. I said, why can't you believe me? One time she felt sick, she had BP. I cried my eyes. I said, God, Satan wants to kill this woman. From there, she believed. She changed. And she started giving testimony. Why? If I was just an A and T, when are you going to remove the yari? Don't be playing. No. She will never remove it. Isn't it so? Some of you, you play with your, 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 your family member. You play with them. Hey, I'm talking, you're laughing. How would they know you are serious? Because even you have not known the gravity of this thing. You have not known the punishment of hell. Some of you thinking that hell is like prison. That's why you see your children, you see your brother, you see your siblings. They are going the way of hellfire. You are still happy, laughing with them, telling one year, two year, three year. They are still the way they are. It's because even you too, you have not known the punishment, the level of hellfire. The level. It can't be. It can't be. I'm telling you, it's paining me. So today, your eyes will be open. Eternity has two destinations. The danger of ignorance of eternity. When we talk about eternity, it's forever. Eternity means forever. And this eternity forever, there is two destinations that lives forever, which is heaven and hell. This place exists up to now, and it will exist forever. This world we are in is not going to do, live forever. This world is going to be destroyed. Even hell fire is going to be destroyed and be cast into a lake of fire. So, God is telling us to prepare your soul to go to a place where you will live forever. But some of you, you are busy wasting your time on this earth that you will not live forever. If you live, if you reach the age of 90 years, some of you will be looking at you and say, wow, I tap into your, hey, 90 years, 80 years, 101, wow. You know, people will be celebrating you because it's, it's, not, it's not easy to reach 100 years. But there are some people that have been in hellfire for more than 2,000 years. And they are still living. Some of you, your great-grandparents have died before you were born. And some of you, now you are 50 years, 40 years, 60 years. But I want to tell you, those your great-grandfather that you don't even know them, they are still living. And if they were an idol worshiper, they are still burning in hellfire today. Waiting for the judgment of God to continue everlasting burning now. So, why will you be wasting time, wasting your energy, Wasting your money on a wall or property that will be destroyed very soon. Some of you, you can't support the things of God again because you are building a house. Because you want to travel. Because you want to buy a particular cloth or a car. I'm saving money. Nothing will tamper from that money. I cannot support the house of God. My sister, my brother, are you sure that car you are buying, you will drive it? Do you know when you will die? Can't you lay treasure in a place where rust or moth will not destroy or thief will not go there? Is that not what the Bible says? You should waste your resources. Give it as if you are mad. Support the house of God because this is the only thing that will help you tomorrow. Give yourself to the things of God. Evangelism, you are there. All night, you are there. Sweeping the church, you are there. Giving to the church, you are there. Do something for the hands of God, you are there. These are the things. When people say, this woman, ah, she knows the tire. Yes, you are not getting tired because this is the only thing that God will know for you when you die. It is not God is not going to ask you, how many cars do you own? Which position were you holding in the world? Oh, you are a vice president. Okay. Oh, yeah, you can enter. You are a big one. God, Bible says God is not a respecter of any man. He only respects children of God that fear him. He said, I will not forsake the righteous. He doesn't say, I will, I will not forsake a uh, president. Or the, I will not forsake the righteous. So today, if you want God to be with you, you must be righteous. Turn from darkness to light. That is the most important life you and I should be living for in this world. Some of you, your mind is full of worldly things, material things. Your mind now is marriage. 
Your mind now is childbearing. Your mind now is uh, all what they are saying here. No, I just want them to lay hands on me. I want to have babies. In fact, I want to travel. I don't have job. No, it's not all this holiness preaching. What I'm looking for is sharp, sharp miracle. That's why some of you have started going to all these prophets, betting yourself. Some members of Orimo, they are telling us. There's a time they told us that some of you will go there and say, hurry more, have the word. But if we sit there, we will not have what we want to let go. And they will be going to some prophet that will tell them, bring oil, put salt, do this, bait this, do that. This. I was shocked when I was saying that. You in hurry more, you have seen the truth. You still live the truth and be looking for common, how will I call it, miracle from fake people. When you have Jesus here, that when he blesses you, nobody can take it from you. You don't have patience. So there is two places called eternity. Heaven and hell. If you don't believe this place exists, I want to tell you, this place is existing. Hallelujah. This place is existing. Let's turn to Revelation chapter 22. Before I go into my encounter message, I just want to prove to you because some people say, where is it in the Bible that there is heaven? Let's prove to you, God himself is talking about heaven. God himself is talking about heaven. God himself is talking about heaven. Revelation chapter 22 verse 14, it says, Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gate into the city. Let's turn to Revelation 21 verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death. In heaven there will be no death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things have passed away. All this former life we are living now, we are living now, this is our present life, it's going to be former life. All our sorrows on earth, our pain, cancer pain, malaria pain, stomach pain, tooth pain, all this pain, persecution pain, trials pain, all these things you are suffering in the hands of men, you will not have it again. Hallelujah. You will not have it again because God will wipe away your tears. God will wipe away your tears. That is heaven. That is heaven. John 3, 3 says, Jesus answered and said unto them, Very verily I said unto you, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is called heaven. If you are not born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. To tell you that there is a place that we are struggling to go to, heaven. Heaven is the place where you and I are supposed to be. Where we will go and be with God. You will be called daughter of Jesus. You will be with God. Hallelujah. So, and this place is for the righteous. Only those that are righteous. The holy ones, those that are holy. In their dressing, in their manner, in their behavior, in their thinking. Everything about this human being is righteousness. There is no sin in him. His neighbors cannot convict him of any sin. They will not say, ah, this woman, ah, is a bad woman. It's a rude woman. Your husband cannot say, my wife is very rude. Your children cannot say, mommy is very wicked, it's evil. No. People you are working with will not say, it's a bad woman. This woman is very heartless. No. You are very good. You are gentle. You rebuke in love, in correction. You are not a corner, corner person. You are righteous. Whatever you say, your yay is yay. You dress in a holy way. Anywhere you go, people know that this is a madam of dignity. That is the, these are the people that we go to heaven on. Fear, those that fear God, those that have the fear of God, doer of the word of God, those that do the commandment, keep the commandment. These are the people that God has told us we go to heaven. If you are not born again, you will not go to heaven. And the other place is called hellfire. Hellfire. Who are the people that will be going to hellfire? Sinners, disobedient children to the word of God. You are disobeying the word of God. You are heartless, unbelievers. You don't believe. Many people say, I don't believe. I don't believe in a revelation. I don't believe that lipstick will take me to hell. No, 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 I don't believe. You will not see the kingdom of God. You will not see the kingdom of God. Those that made themselves God. You are God for yourself. Some of you, you turn yourself God. 
what you want to do is what you will do. You don't seek counsel. You don't seek the face of God. You want to marry this woman, you married. You want to marry this man, you married. You want to pack out of your house, you leave your husband anyhow. Nobody control you. Today you want to dress like this, you bow face and dress and come. You don't bother. You waste, God, you waste your resources, anything. It's my money. This is how I want it. This is my money. These are people that are not going to heaven. Because children of God, to seek counsel, Jesus is our leader, is our guardian, is our father. We should tell him anything. He should be, he should be aware of anything we, are, we want to do or what we are doing. But many of you, God, don't know what you are doing. It's not in your marriage. You choose your husband for yourself. And now you are blaming God. God, why am I suffering like this? Why are you allowing this man? Did you ever ask him, God, I want to get married. Show me my husband. Did God reveal your husband to you? Did you have any, any guarantee that God spoke? God, show me this man. That you will hold God responsible. You are just gods for yourself. Women are disobedient. Hell is for disobedient children. Children that rule their life. Hell is for fornicators, abortionists. I don't want this baby girl, you do abortion. Hell is for those that choose, they want to divorce today and remarry. Some women will tell you that no, nobody will talk to me, I will leave this man. I will leave this man, I'm going to remarry. And remarry. These are people that are meant for going to hell. Those that dress seductively, your dressing is bad. Your dressing is bad. And you know, you are dressing for people to say you are doing guy. This place called hellfire is for you. Is for you. Galatians 5, 19. This place is for you. So don't be ignorant of these two places. Hell and heaven. Don't say, hey, they have never told us in the church. Never. My pastor never taught us about hell. They didn't tell us. You, that is why you are planning to go and tell Satan. Or tell Jesus. Father. God, you know, my pastor never said anything like that. That is not, ignorance is not an excuse. Galatians 5, 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these: Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, adultery, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, seduction, heresies, envies. You can see, you have some of this, you have envy in your heart, murderers. Some of you, you don't murder physically, you murder through charm. You go to somebody and say, kill this person. Or through witchcraft, you have killed many people. You are a murderer. Drunkenness, revelance, and short life. Of this which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. You way they do this kind thing, you will never enter the kingdom of God. So don't listen to your pastor that is telling nobody can be holy. God knows that we cannot live above sin. It is a lie. We can live above sin because he that dwells in us is more than he that dwells in the world. Jesus has the power to stop sin in our life. If you are a true child of God, you will never commit sin. That is what the Bible tells us in 1 John chapter 3. He that commits sin is of the devil. Because the devil sinned from the beginning. Love not the world and the things in the world. Anyone that loveth the world, when the love of the Father is not in you. Don't be deceiving yourself. You love the world, the things of the world. Some of you still go to worldly parties, dance. Drink alcohol. You say, hey, it's just 1% of alcohol. Some of you participate in sinful business. And you say, it's my sister. It's my brother. Who tell you? Who told you to be doing that? It's your sister. It's your brother. And one day, you will defy yourself. A woman, they discipline her anymore. And after the discipline, she did not come back. He said, they said, why, why, were you, why did you allow worldly music? Why do you allow carnality in your daughter's wedding? He said, well... Actually, I told God that the day you will give my daughters, any one of my daughter husband, that day God should forgive me because I'm going to do sin truly. And I said it years ago. That is this one. He's not even a member of all anymore. Can you imagine? He said it years ago and he kept it in his heart in her heart. All these years she said he's a member of all anymore. She kept a promise of sin, which he told God that that day God will forgive her. And the thing came to pass maybe after 12 or 13 years. And in the door of our wedding, members of all the moment, we are leaving the, 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 the reception. We are going. Worldliness, dancing. 
See the mother of the day. You will never know she's the only next person. Only she did not put her there. See her shine, shine on her cloth. Type big gale. They go down, they come up. And he said, today is my day. That day, only one day, all your years you have been suffering for the Lord have been deleted from. Why are you playing with your salvation? Why do you want to throw eternity for, for your daughter, for yourself, for your sister, for your brother, to please somebody in a day, in their sinful day, and you choose to throw your salvation? It's because you are ignorant of what you have gotten. You don't know the preciousness of getting this. You don't even know the danger of missing heaven. You don't know the danger of meeting heaven. Mark chapter 9. See what Jesus is saying there. You that you are playing with, with sin, it is better for you, my brother, not to have been born. Then you are born. You are now become a man and then you miss heaven. It is better for you, for you not to be conceived and come to this world. It's better for you to have died when you are small. That now you have grown up, you have known heaven and hell, and you still fall into the hand of this, the angry God. Mark chapter 9. Let's take it from verse 43. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. When they meet quench, it can never be, how would they put it? put it off? You can never put it off. The fire cannot be quenched. It's fire controlled by God. You can't quench it. You can't say, ah, pour water. There is no water in hell. There is no fresh air in hell. I told somebody, I was talking to somebody. I said, me, sometimes I meditate deeply about hell and I pray very well. I say, God, save my soul. When they say fasting, only three days fasting in the church will declare so people will twist face because they want to eat. When are we going to stop this prayer? Now make them serve food. Just three days fasting. Some people, four days fasting is a long thing. I have ulcer. Please, I can't continue this fasting. My dear, do all to go to hell for no. Because that your ulcer in hellfire. <laughs> you will never see water again, neither food. For thousands, thousands, I don't know when. As they say, God said, the day you will come out of hell is the day I cease to be God. And he can never cease to be God. So, when we are talking about hellfire, you are doing your head as if hey, this message is too long. Your mind is outside. This thing I'm saying is more important than any contract you will have in this world. Even if you want to go and see the president now, you will say, please, I want to settle with God now. I'm not going anywhere. Because nobody knows what. You will be walking like this. Accident. Problem. You will sleep and never wake up. Is that the time you begin to go, oh, please, just send me back. Give me a second chance. I'm going to do my restitution. I'm going to stop my boyfriend. I'm going to stop all this evil. I'm going to confess my witchcraft. God, I will not be afraid again. Jesus, send me back. When? Is it when your soul has departed from your body? Is it when you turn, you see your body lying down? Nobody will help you. Now you are in the spirit realm. The physical cannot help you. Me, but Dadirika, your leader, your husband can be see your body. You'll be running up and down. Your children cannot help you again. They only see your physical body. Now you are dealing with the God of the spirit. Jesus, that ruined both the spirit and the physical. And that God was talking to you. Why are you not taking your life serious? Why are you not taking your life serious? It is better for you to go to, as the Bible says, it is better for you to enter into the life name, heaven, everlasting place, in, with one hand, than carry two hands to hell. If it's this hand that is causing you to sin, maybe you, you are a kleptorist, that anything you see, is it klepto they call it, that anything you see, you go to somebody else, you will steal it, you will steal. If this hand, go to God in prayer, Father, cut this hand, in the spirit realm, the demon that used to use this hand to steal, I kill you today. You, this hand, die in the name of Jesus. That is what God is saying. If is this your leg that will cause you to sin, like, like carrying you to a house where they do gossip, carry you to a charm, 
a place where they do juju. This your leg carry you, like carrying you to places that is not good. You will say, why, why am I always pulled to this place? Why am I always like going to this sister? All the time will gossip. I don't know. Tell this your leg. Prophesy to your leg. Leg, hear me today. In the name of Jesus, I kill every power moving me to a sinful place. If it's your eye, Bible says pluck it out. You like watching nonsense, wasting time on things that are not glorifying God. Father, this is my eye. Let it be blind today on things that are not glorifying God. That is what Bible is saying here. He's not talking about physical cutting, take knife and cut it. I know. He's talking about spiritual cutting. In prayer, cut that hand. Cut that leg. Cut that conversation. That best friend is my friend, but you know that friend is not sanctified. All our word in our mouth is more carnality, criticism. When you go there, you will force to be, to be gossiping. I cut that friendship today in the name of Jesus. Because salvation is personal. You can die before that friend. And tomorrow, that friend will come and get genuine salvation and repent. But you, you have gone ahead of her. And she will go to heaven. Can't you take example of Saul? Saul was persecuting the Christians. Is it not so? Those that were with him, persecuting the Christians, some died before him, and later him, he became Paul, a great man of God, and entered heaven. And some that were, they were saying, Saul that sent us, God have mercy, they are in hell now. But they, now they know that Saul have gone to heaven. Do you want to go to heaven for who? Who's human being? My husband, my, my children, my this. No human being, no. Your soul is more important. Because you can die before these people. Lastly, before I share my testimony, and my testimony, I'm not going too deep. I'm just going to touch brief because many of you have heard. If you want to hear more, you can get it on the YouTube or you can get the CD here. Isaiah chapter 66. Isaiah chapter 66. You that you are saying, hey, there is no place mention hell. Who said there is hell? Who said there is hell? Let me show you what God said. Isaiah chapter 66 verse 24. Isaiah chapter 66, verse 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcass that the skeleton, the skeleton. I want to tell you, this scripture has really practicalized in my life. They shall go forth. I have gone there and I have seen the carcass of sinners. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcass of the men that have transgressed against me, that against God. For their worm shall not die. You will go, God will give you opportunity to go and see people that transgress, that sin against the word of God, that trample, trample, upon, trample under the word of God, under their feet. Those that push the word of God and say, no, leave me, leave me alone, leave me alone. They will tell you, God says, stop this, you don't bother. That transgressed against me. You are going to see the worm that will be eating them. I told you about that worm. When that worm bites you, the worm is feasting on your body. When that worm bites you, it's like when a dog bites you on earth. And when a dog bites you, now you will you be sitting down? You'll be jumping, running, shouting, crying. But in hell, you can't run. You only be crying. You only be shouting. And these worm are not looking like dog. They are tiny, tiny worm like this. When they feast on you, they will gather on your body. If, if you want to remove one, another one is here. Another one is here. Passing through your nose, your ear, your head, your mouth, your intestine, every part. They cover you. They are busy biting you. As you feel the pain on earth, when a dog will bite you, you will be shouting, help, help. This is how when the, when the demons, when the worm will be biting you, you will be crying for help. And not only the worm, as the worm is biting you, this is how fire is burning you. Can you stand? For lying, for witchcraft. What are they giving you in that witchcraft kingdom that you don't want to come out? Can you stand this punishment? I want to tell you that when Satan is punishing you, only one person can deliver you, God. But when God punishes you, who will deliver you? When Satan begins to oppress you, even if you are a witch, you want to come out. As you say, God, save me. I don't want to belong with them again. God will arise for you and deliver you. But if you say, no, I'm afraid of Satan more than God, God will just look at you. Satan will deceive you. 
but God knows that you will die one day. And he has said in his word, all souls are mine. Both the, the witches and wizards and the, the unrighteous and the righteous, all of us, are, our souls is belonging to Jesus Christ. So even when you are going for witchcraft, he's just looking at you. Jesus is just looking at you. Finish and come and meet me here. You will tell me why you leave me, me that, create, that made you, create you. You leave me for, for, for Satan. Then you will now see witches are in hell, crying, regretting the day they follow Satan. Prostitutes are in hell. He said, for their worm shall not die. Neither shall their fire be quenched. You have seen? Mark chapter 9 told us that the fire shall not be quenched. Is it not so? Now, Old Testament is talking the same thing. In Isaiah 66, shall, he said, he say, neither, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be abhorred unto all flesh. They shall be fearful. It shall be going to be terrible to all flesh. I want to tell you, this scripture is alive. This scripture, me talking to you, Sister Linda, I have seen it. I have gone to see the carcass of men that transgress against God. I have gone to see the worm that died not. I have gone to see the fire that cannot be quenched. I have seen the abhorring of all flesh. How they look, how terrible they are. I saw my mother, I, me myself, was afraid to get closer to her because she has burned beyond recognition. You cannot recognize her. She looked like a demon. She has burned, burned that you will be afraid to hold her. Even her presence is fearful. My own mother I love so much that we eat together. I hug her. We sleep on the same bed. She loved me so much. I was one of her favorite daughters. But when I saw her in here, I only cried, Lord, save her. But me, don't want to hold her. She was fearful. She looked like a demon after she had been born. It's a fearful thing. So today, I want to awake you from the danger of ignorance of eternity. You are, you are not aware of this place, eternity, heaven and hell. I was like that some years ago. I was having, I was in this spirit of ignorance, of hellfire. I was aware, I knew about heaven, but how to get there, I was deceived by fake preachers. My former pastor would tell me, God has paid the price for us. Heaven is our goal. It is the heart that matters for, for heaven. It is by grace we will go to heaven. So when you say it is by grace, it's like, oh, God is the one that will just make us to go to heaven. And he told us that what God is looking for, make sure you are coming to church. Make sure you pay your tithe. Make sure that you are participating in all activities in the church because if you die, no church can recognize, no church can stand for you. No pastor will say, I know this person. God, God in heaven will hear the pastor and God will know that you are, not, you are not serious. But if you are in a church, they know you and you are participating well, the church can pray for you on behalf when you have died and then God will say, oh, he or she was a serious member. See the church know, he, know him or her and you can go to heaven. Can you, can you imagine? And I was key into it. I give all my heart to that, that, that kind of doctrine. And I was doing it. I make sure I come to church. I participate in activities in the church. I sing in the choir. We compose song. We are tireless serving God. Because my pastor has said, when you are coming to church like this, this is how you will go to heaven. I make sure that when I come, he should see me so that he will always record in his book that he's a serious sister. When they say we should, we should give money for billing, for this, I will give. I was not married that time, boyfriend, selling my things, support the things of God. I was so doing it with all joy. I never know this as services I was rendering to God. But to enter heaven, I need to live a holy life. That is what the pastor kept from us. 
He never told us that going to this heaven is a holy living. Home. But all the activities we are doing in the church is when you get to heaven, they will reward you for all the sweeping, supporting the house of God, you're paying your tithe, blessing the house of God, blessing the poor. These are activities, these are services which God will bless you. But to enter that heaven, you must be holy. That one, they didn't teach us in the church. And that is what many Christians are saying today. How can I build a house for God and then I go to hell? How can I win souls for God and then I go to hell? Do you know how many cars I've bought for my pastor? Do you know how many widows I've been taken care of? Do you think that I will go to hell? My sister, these are services you are rendering to God. And when you enter into heaven, they will reward you for your services. But to enter heaven, it's holiness. Without holiness, what the Bible say, no man shall see the Lord. It did not say without prayer. It did not say without evangelism. It did not say without preaching. It said without holiness. That holiness, you must be holy. When you enter heaven now, then God will now give you reward that you were a good and faithful servant. You win many souls for me. You preach. You build houses for me. You support the needy, the poor. Oh, my daughter, welcome, my good and faithful servant. Take your inheritance. Take your blessing. They will give you martial. Dress you with gold. Put... Put your crown with stars of diamond. These are the reward. But to go to the gate of heaven and say, I built 10 church. And an angel will not open gate for you. Heaven will not open for you. What will be open for you? You are a pure child of God. A holy, blameless child of God. Enter into my kingdom. So if you have been deceived, you are not taking notice of sin in your life. Your own, I sing in the choir. I sing. I do this for God. I sweep the church. And that is what you have given yourself to. You are not bothered to, to get away sin from your life. My sister, you are walking in vain. Build all the churches you know. Win souls for God. Open chapters, which is very good. But you will not go to heaven if you are not doing it in holiness. If you are not righteous. If you are not truthful. If you are not blameless. If Satan comes and they don't find anything in you, they welcome. But if Satan comes and says, ah, this person... Leave her to be wasting her time evangelizing. Let her finish. As you see her so, she can lie. As you see her, she has anger. As you see her so, she's a witch. As you see her so, she's so disobedient to her husband. As you see her, Satan will be telling the demon, don't bother about her. Leave her, let her be wasting her time. There is one thing that has hindered her. So that is the thing you should take notice of today. So I was living my life like that. Living my life serious in the house of God. Prayer, we are there. All night, we are there. Giving flyers in the streets, we are there. Dancing behind speaker. Crusade, crusade, I was there. My friends, they know me. The church, the pastors, they know me. Hey, we are up and down, winning souls. Paying transport for people to come for our church program. We are there. Buying uniform to sing in the choir. We are there. Supporting one another. We are there. But holy living was not in me. I smoke. I commit fornication, I do abortion, I go to nightclub, I have boyfriends, not one, not two. We take charm, we go to juju man, we take charm, we use charm, but we still come to church. We still come to church, I dress seductively, my dressing we are not good at all. Naked dressing all the way, day and night. Short skirt, split skirt, breast it out. Going up and down, I was not proud of my natural beauty. I'm not proud of my natural hair. Every time, attachment, with one cap, palm in here, tint here today like this, cut this here like this, put eyelash, put falseness, all these artificial things were the best thing on my body. Put brown powder, white powder on my face, lipstick, go to the point that I pencil. I say, oh, every time we are buying I pencil, I want my face to always be looking good. I now went and do tattoo on my eyebrow like this, tattoo on my back, on my hand, every part. There's a spirit behind tattoo. If you put tattoo here, you want people to see the tattoo. So I have tattoo on my back and my hand. So those days, all my clothes, I will go tell or cut this side so that my tattoo be shown. So always my back down is open. My hand will be open. So when I pop, people say, ah, I like your tattoo. Oh, I like your eyebrow. Oh, I like those kind of things. It makes me feel somehow. I never knew I was destroying my soul. But I was a sister in the church in the sense, a choir sister. Fervent going to church. If you see us, and when the pastor will come, we will kill Satan today. We will kill Satan. All. We can pray, scatter, die, die. Two hours, four hours, five. See, we are sweating. 
Satan will not be laughing. Look at this one. You are killing me. You are carrying my property. Anger is in our heart. Malice. Unforgiveness. I can keep malice one year. It's not even shaking me. If I see you, the things start new fresh. But still, we are in the church. Until one day. February 15, 2013. Although I have a younger sister that I've been preaching. You see, some of you were here, I think two Sundays or three Sundays ago. My elder brother greeted you people. This one, he was tired with me. He looked at me and said, this is the black sheep of the family. Because he grew up in deeper life all his life. Deeper life pastor in my country, they know me. Because he has carried us for prayer. Talk to my sister. Bring them to my house. Please talk to my sister. They will be talking and be looking like them. Sometimes when I, don't want, when I know that he is coming with his pastor, I have somewhere to go. I say, I know. I know what to do. That this pastor will round up his preaching very fast. Because they have long preaching and prayer. I will go and wear tatanos clothes. Come and sit there and say, I'm ready for the preaching. My brother said, Kai, Kai, go and change. I said, brother, I don't have any other clothes. This is the only, if the pastor cannot preach, then they leave the preaching today. The pastor will be doing his head or they, they claw like this. So, sister, as we are talking, this life you are living, your brother, as in my heart, I said, when he tired like this, his neck will pay him. And he will say, so we'll continue next time. They will go. If we look at it, a person wearing holy clothes as he's come out, he's trapped. I say, sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm a Christian. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm a born again Christian. Thank you very much. I don't want, well, we are going with my friend. I say, they want us to dress like that. I need magic. Kai, those days, I was not happy with Papa Kumio. I said, Kai, this man, wicked people, oh, how will he be telling people to dress like this? What kind of doctrine? Only him, oh, all over the world, see us. People wear trousers, pastor wife, we open our hair. I don't cover head, go to church. How will I spend money on my weave to go and show off I cover it for what? We don't cover head. I thought I was enjoying Christianity. I don't know what was persecution at all. Who is persecuting who? Satan can persecute his children. No. That's why when persecution is coming away, don't say which kind of it is the right Christianity. That's why you have been persecuted. But other Christians, they don't know what is persecution. We only read it in the Bible. Oh, Paul was beheaded. So, oh, Kai, Paul, suffer. So hey, Peter, hey, we thought that they are the only ones. In our own Christianity, we believe that Jesus has paid the price. We are enjoyers. We don't need to suffer. We don't need to suffer. I never knew we were not Christian. Christians should pass through suffering, persecution for your faith. That is how to test you if truly you love God. If you're a Christian, you don't know what is persecution. You have not started it. Because as you started a new Christianity, Satan will run to block you. And these are the things he will do to block you. Persecution, trials, temptation, raising your children against you, your working place, your husband, your sibling. Everybody will start hating you. Why? Satan wants you to drop that thing. Ah, okay, if it's for holiness, I drop it. Please, I want friendship. But if you hold it, he will persecute you. So if you hold darkness, he will not bother about you. That's why many Christians say, what is persecution? What is temptation? I don't know those things. So my life continued like this until that day. That faithful day, my younger sister, my elder brother, they have spoken to me. They talked to me years. Years. If Finda will go for retreat like this, she will come back and be crying. That Linda, God said that I should tell you to give your life to him. This and this and this. Me, I will be surprised. Why is he saying God said to give? I've given my life to Jesus. In fact, any crusade I go, they say, give your life to Jesus. We are in front. If I finish with this crusade, next to morning again, well, say, give your life. We are coming in front again. So which one that Jesus has to give my life? What is it? She will tell you, live a holy life. I say, Finda, that is not it. So one time I went to my former pastor. I told him, I said, my sister is condemning my dressing. She's condemning my life. And truly, I know boyfriend is a sin, smoking is a sin, but my brethren, I don't know how to stop it. I will sit and say, how can I stop boyfriend? How can I stop? So, pastor say, God understand. God know I'm an orphan. I don't have somebody to pay my rent, to pay my school fee. I just need boyfriend, so what will I do? So, I don't even know how to stop it. I was saying that God will not be able to supply my needs until I have somebody to help me. But when she was talking about joining, attachment, you know, naked dressing, short skirts, all this seductive dressing, 
that will make somebody to look at us and say, wow, you are pretty. I say, ah, if I leave this kind of dressing, what? So when I asked my pastor, my pastor told me and said, which doctrine is that? It is a lie. We are under grace. Jesus has paid the price. It doesn't matter. Look at my wife. Is she not putting these things on? Do you think I love you more than my wife? If these things are sinful, I would have told my wife to strip up from it. My daughter, don't be deceived. That's why we have told you people not to go and be listening to other people. Eh, why are you leaving us and you go and be asking? No, it's my younger sister. She's attending this church. They say these people are in the Old Testament. God has abolished the Old Testament. Now we are under grace. It says a lie. And then he opened the Bible that said, our body is the temple of God. And then he told me, am I the one that wrote it? God said, this is your temple. This is body is his temple. And God said in his Bible, dress the temple. Dress the temple. He emphasized on that side. The Bible said, dress the temple. So go and dress it. We serve a rich God. We don't serve a poor God. Don't mind these holy, holy people. They're dirty. Look at them. They are not even looking good. You see, they want people to hate our God. Dress that when somebody sees you will give his life to Jesus. And draw a bottle of anointing oil and really baptize me very well with it. Pour it on my head and say from today, never you listen to your sister again. She want to deviate you. She want to put you into suffering. Who married you? In fact, are you married? I say, no, daddy. Uh -huh. Who married you? Go on, go on, go on. Go and tie your head and look like grandmother. Who married you? You will not be in my church oh, if you are not getting married. I went home, and then I told Finda, I'm not your member, neither am I part of your church. From today, never you tell me how to dress. Don't preach, don't bring any of your church CD here. I don't want to hear it in this house. When I'm not around, you can listen for yourself. Finda cried. I had my sister cry in the room as if our parent just died. She said, oh God. Disconnect my sister from false pastors. Father, open the eye of my sister. Father, show my sister mercy. I just dress, I leave the house. My life was like that. Stubbornness. Unbelief. To Saturday because I was a lover of fashion. Lover of worldly pleasure. Like party, clubbing. These are things that I love doing. Drinking, sitting with friends, laughing, gisting. This is it. Until that faithful day, God answered Finda and said, wait, let me show her. On the 15th of February, 2013, I woke up with a strange pain. When I woke up, I sensed that I was not breathing well. So as I was not breathing well, and the thing was so rapid, it's like in a second, my breathing is ceasing. So I quickly called Finda. She rushed into my room. She said, Linda, what happened? I said, I'm not breathing well. I am choking. This is how I was. As if I'm an asthmatic patient. I'm not an asthmatic patient. She said, ah, when did this one start? I said, Finda, pray for me, I'm dying. I just wake up, I cannot breathe well. I'm choking. I'm not breathing well. I'm not breathing well. She said, ah, ah. Okay, leave the room. Let's go to the parlor. Then I, you know, get up from my bed, sat down, want to throw my leg to follow her. As soon as I get up from my bed, I want to carry my leg, I fell down, I noticed that both of my legs were not working again in the sense there was no life, I was not feeling anything. So I don't even know how to carry myself, nothing was heavy on my leg. Then she said, Linda, what happened? I said, my leg, I can't move. He said, ah, ah, what is happening? Immediately, some kind of foamy saliva was coming out of my mouth. She said, ah, ah, Linda, what is it? Hey, I called my younger brother, friends that were in the house. Please, oh, you push will come. You push will come. Something's going on with Linda. They rush into my room. Everybody, Linda, what happened? They're asking. My whole body system was changing. It's like when you have terrible sickness. Is it malaria now? Is it cancer? Is it typhoid? Is it your system is just fluctuating? Is going, it's shutting down. My, my strength, I was weak. My heart is not beating well. My body is weak. I noticed my voice was decreasing, getting low. Everything about me was just getting upside. I was not understanding myself again. They will be asking me, Linda, what happened? I don't have energy to answer them. 
the old lady will pray for me. I'm dying. Pray for me. Pray for me. Before they know, they cannot hear me again. They will do like this. Lena, what do you say? Finda now say, but I will hear them very well. I was seeing them. Finda now say, bring her to the parlor. Bring her, bring her. She rushed to the parlor. She sat down. And they carried me like a baby. I was on a, in a hand like this. She looked at my face. I said, Linda, Linda, let me lead you to Christ. Linda, Linda, say, Lord Jesus, say, Lord Jesus. For me to open this mouth to say, Lord Jesus. We that used to say, Jesus, come into our life, Jesus. When, they, when death comes, you that you are postponing your restitution. You are postponing the day you give your life to Christ. When I'm married, I will give my life to Christ. When I have this child, you, will know, you don't know who is Satan. You think Satan is careless. Satan will follow you bomba to bomba because he know that you will not want you to receive Christ. He will not want you, even some witches, when they are even dying on the sick bed, they will be thinking, can I confess? Or Satan will be there and say, ah, ah, confess now. You, 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 you've confessed. We know there are some people in, in this movement that we used to visit in the hospital. We know they are not clean. We will go to the anything you want to say. They will look at us like this. We know what is, what is beating in their mind. But Satan will be there. That's why God said, when you are a youth, when you are strong like this, make your way right with me now. Don't wait when you are sick. So when Finda was telling me, you save Christ, Linda, say Lord Jesus, Linda, Linda, please say Lord Jesus. My sister was crying. To open this mouth to say Lord Jesus, I was struggling. Then my younger brother said, carry a spoon, put in her mouth, put in her mouth. She, she, her teeth will cramp, this I was hearing everything clear, but me, I can't move again. I can't speak loud again. The only thing I can do very well, I was just crying. My tears were just running. Because I look at them, look at them, they cannot help me. They don't know what I'm passing through now. They too, they are just disturbed. My younger ones cannot help me. It's only Jesus can save my brethren. She tried. She was crying, shaking me for me not to close my eye. My eyes will be doing as if it's dimming. She said, no, Linda, open your eyes. Linda, say this. Linda, open your eyes. They will be shaking me. You will see this one stand looking like this. They were confused. She did. She tried. And then it's like a heavy thing pressed this my chest that I was not able to take deep breath. Like the thing congeal me, quiz me. And then I try to balance to breathe well. The other thing that happened to me, I just found myself among crowd of people. How I got there, I cannot tell. Either they pushed me or somebody dragged me up to today, I cannot tell. There is so... The, 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 the spirit, the soul, and the body, the departure is very fast. As soon as you are, the spirit is leaving you. I started following these people. One thing that comforted me there, I was comforted, is because I know they are human being like me, but I don't know their name. Where are they coming from? I don't know. But I say, these are human beings. Where are they going to? Where am I? Okay, let's just go. We started moving in this journey. I noticed in this journey, all of us were naked. Nobody were wearing clothes. You that you are busy wasting money on clothes, fashion, this, hey, me, I cannot leave trousers. So you will not even carry the trousers, not to talk about the weaver cap, but you are going to be burning because of them. Nothing was on me. Even watch was not in my hand. Common pants was not on me. Pure water, I didn't carry. 15 naira was not with me. Nothing was with me. Naked I came, naked I returned. I look at myself, I was pure naked, no shame. I wasn't even thinking, hey, hey, I know we are this. Hey. The men too were naked. The women too, they were naked. People that were there, we are naked. All of us, we are going. As we keep on going, I started feeling heat. Heat. Then I said, ah, ah, where is this heat coming from? Where is this heat coming from? Heat. 
to the point that my body is like they are tearing me with blade. I was feeling the heat. I said, ah. And you know, I, I'm not wearing clothes. When I look around, no tree to say, let me go and take shelter. No house, nothing. We were just bare naked in an open place. I didn't see fire. I looked up to say that, is it the sun? I cannot find the sun. I said, ah, which kind of place is this? Ah. Then I begin to get sense. Uh, you know, I begin to get some kind of something in my mind like, ah, wait, wait, wait. I recognize this place. Ah, I remember on earth we have sun, we have moon, there's cloud, there's water, there's tree, there's house, there's car. Which place is this? Which place is there? Nobody is answering me. Salvation is personal. You are your own now. My pastor that was deceiving me, my boyfriend that was deceiving me, my friends that was saying, why do you want to follow your younger, your younger sister to deceive you? He was, they were no, nobody was there. Then, I said, ah, when we keep on going again, keep on going, the heat will increase. My nose is like they are putting granite pepper inside. The heat, my body. I said, ah, me, I will not continue this journey. The heat, it's like they are putting me on top of a, a dryer. My body, my body, the, the heat, it's like he wants to tear me. I was feeling my body. I said, ah, we keep on going again. The journey continues. Sounds. I started here crying. I look around. I didn't see the people. Ah, ah. Where are these people crying from? And I know it's not one person crying. It's multitude of sound. Put together. It's echoing. I say, ah. Where are these people crying from? Where is this crying coming from? Where are they? What is happening? Where am I? Who brought me here? Nobody is recognizing me. Neither me, I'm recognizing anybody. Oh, Paul. Oh, Susan. Oh, no. Everybody. Ah, what is happening? Then, ho and behold, I look in front of us. This road we are moving on have only one destination. It was into that tunnel. And that tunnel, you cannot see the entrance, the, the inner of the tunnel. Like, when, like now if you are standing outside, you can see inside the church. That place is so dark. The mouth of the tunnel is thick darkness. But you cannot see the tunnel, the road appearing on the other side, continue. But as soon as you enter that place, no road again. So, and then I notice demons appear in front of that tunnel. Ah, my mind, I thought, that, okay, maybe these are the demons that are crying in this place. What am I going to do with demons? I make up my mind to leave. I started fearing. They just appear fearfully. This one with axe. This one with shovel. This one with spear. This one with every kind of instrument. Standing fearfully waiting for you. So I make up my mind that I should turn back. I will not continue because we are crowd. The Bible says many are called, few are choosing. I'm telling you the people that are going to hell, the people I saw, with me going to hell, 20, on the 15th of February, we are, they, are, they can double here more than 20 times. We are many, I say crowd, crowd like this. We are moving, pushing us, going, crowd, and all of us are naked. Then I say, no, I will not continue. I wanted to turn my back to start going, to start running, fear. My legs were not agreeing. I was still going. I get consciousness. I say, ah, what is happening to my leg? No, 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 no. I don't want to go. What is controlling me? What is happening? My feet were still going. Was still dragging me. I was so highly in great fear, crying. But this cry, when I'm talking about crying, you'll be thinking water was coming out of my eyes. No. The heat will not allow water to come out. It's like you're putting an empty pot in the, on the fire. The heat that is coming out from there will dry anything water in that pot. The heat was not making water to come out of my eye, but I was yelling, I was shouting, I was lamenting, crying. Then those that were in front of me, 
When the demon handled them, dragged them into that place, you will hear them screaming, crying. Their voice is going. You know that this person is going for, is passing through pain. They are carrying but you cannot see again. You will hear them shouting. You yourself, your heart, you'll be panting. I say, God, save me. Jesus, save me. Father said, oh, how did I get here? Linda, something's going on. What is happening to me? Hey, me, somebody should help me. I was so afraid. Fear took over me till I reached close to the tunnel. A demon stood in front of me like this, and I was so like a baby under him. A very gigantic, huge. He bent down his head. I look at him. I quickly zoom in. He have a cough horn on his head and a tail from his back and he's standing on a lizard leg but here he's standing on human the leg is like human being and the chest is looking like human being have muscle but it's in between like mixed animal then he look at me the eyes were red the face were, were, were mixed I bent down like this I was shaking I've never been afraid like this. My heart, I was so afraid. I wished to disappear. In fact, I was wishing for power to disappear. I was calling, Jesus save me. Father save me. God save me. I just feel a push. I landed on my back. And then he get hold of my leg. One of my feet. And he started dragging me. As he's dragging me into that dark tunnel. As he's dragging me, I was on my back. One of my, my legs, he hold my legs like this. He was dragging me. As he was dragging me, my back, as we are going, as we enter that dark tunnel, I quickly noticed that this heat that we were feeling on the journey was from here. Immediately we entered that tunnel. I was not even seeing him again. Darkness took everywhere, but I can feel his hand on my leg. And then I noticed, immediately I entered that dark place. I noticed everything called saliva in my body was shrinking. I can feel myself like when you are sucking orange. How the orange is squeezing. I can feel myself dehydrating. I can feel myself squeezing like they are squeezing me to break me. I'm feeling myself getting small, getting, like getting lean. And then I noticed... The, 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 the hair that I was inhaling in hell, it was like I'm using fire to snuff it. My, when the heat will enter my nose, it's like the heat will, will explode my head. So I was choking. The smell was very terrible. The smell, it's you that you pass me a rot it, you your nose and run. In hell fire, you can't stand it. Burnt people. Rotting human being, but they are still living. So as he was carrying me down, we were going down like this. We were turning. I noticed I was turning, turning. Then I was seeing like the light, reddish light, where we have gone down. The wall was reddish light. It is not a light of sunlight. It was reddish light, like fire light was brightening when he dropped me. I look where we have gone to. When I look at the place, I saw endless fire. This fire that cannot be quenched, I saw it. I asked myself, where am I? My brother, my sister, don't go to hell. Don't go to, do all. Pray all the prayer. Cry to God every day. God, give me heaven. It's because we don't know about hell. People don't know. They don't take sin seriously. It is not a plain place. God made that place to torture the fallen angels, Satan. And we man, Satan, say, me, I cannot be here alone. I'm going to bring your children. I'm going to make them to be rebellious. And because Satan no God hates sin, he know nobody sin. No sinner will go there. That's why he came to this world and begin to cause you to sin. So that you will go and join him in that fire. Satan himself is afraid of hell. 
It's a place God pour. You know, the Bible makes us know that everything God does is good, is perfect. When you look at the mountain, you say, wow, how God made stone big like this. When you look at the river, you say, hey, how God make it like this. Well, this is how I want to tell you. If you see hell, you will say, hey, which kind of punishment is this? When I saw the fire, I said to myself, what is this? What am I seeing? I've never come across a fire like that. The fire is boiling on its own. The fire is heaping up like mountain. The fire will be rolling people as if it's, it's dancing with them. The fire will increase. The fire will change its color. The fire will bring out heat. A heat that we have never felt on earth. All this one you are saying, place is hot. this is not it. The sun cannot stand the fire, the heat of the fire. When, this, when the fire will be bubbling, when the fire will be bubbling, the color will be changing to perfect red. You will hear the screaming. The people in the fire will be crying, shouting as if they should, they should, keep, they should tear themselves. The heat is increasing from the normal heat. The temperature is increasing day, time by time or minute by minute, I don't know. But when the tea will be bubbling, when the heat is bubbling, you will hear people. God, what, what am I seeing? What am I hearing? The shout of people. You will know that they are not playing there. The people are regretting the day they die as a sinner. I look at them. My heart, my body, my everything. I say, God, take me out of here. Somebody should help me. What am I seeing? I was so afraid. I was afraid of what I was seeing. I've never seen suffering like that. How can human being? The other thing I saw, human being are still alive inside fire. Have you ever seen anything like that? Have you ever seen somebody burning from yesterday? Fire is burning the person and the person up to today is still talking. The person is still crying. Have you ever seen, they say, fire break out. Somebody is burning. And they came, the person is still talking. The fire is still burning. Have you ever seen anything like that? That was the thing that gets me off my mind. I've never seen a terrible thing like that. How can somebody be burning, be rolling, be shouting, coming down? Fire will bring it all. He's swimming in the fire. But he's, he or she is still alive. The eyes have come out. The person is burning. The body has dropped. The head has exploded. The the, the body is dropping everywhere, rottenness. The person is rotting, but he's still shouting, Mercy, get me out, have mercy, fire, oh God. I was terrified. I was terrified. I said, what am I seeing? Somebody should help me. What is happening to me? Who are these people? Where am I? Ignorant soul, because I was not told about hellfire. I went to church, have God, but I don't have an idea about hellfire. And my pastor said, hellfire is a terrible information. We should not be scaring people in the church. So hellfire is forbidden to preach in our church. So all of us is heaven, heaven. When we there, we think of seeing mansions, beautiful places. Some of you will say, all the more hellfire, hellfire. It is better you are here and then you escape. That you don't know and then you drop there. How will you come to explain so as I was seeing it, three demons walked towards me. As they came to me, two carried me like this with my hand like this, dragging me without pity. They were dragging me. As they carried me to a place, they chained my leg, chained my hand, opened me very wide. And then one of them came in front of me. And say, Linda, you disobedient child, are you not afraid of God? I said, ah, me, disobey God, disobedient? Because my brethren, I love God. I suffer in churches, not one, 
A pastor will say, bring money. I don't have. Go and pawn. I will pawn my TV. I will carry TV to, to, to touch for so sowing seed. Selling my shoe, my bag, just to go and pay, give, give money to church. How, will I do, how did I disobey God now? I was confused. I started checking myself. Disobey God? What did my pastor say I did not do? God, I sing in the choir. I go to church. I pay tithe. I pay offering. God, my tithe card is even there. God, how did I disobey you? No, something is wrong somewhere. God, something is wrong. I don't deserve this. I didn't, deceive, I didn't disobey God. I go to church. I do all night. We pray. We fast. I believe in Jesus. God, have mercy. Then the demon said to me, there are two types of sin for life you were living before you die. That thing flashed on me, death. So I have died. Then I remember... I was struggling in my house. Hey, this thing results to death. So, what I'm seeing now is my soul, it's my spirit. I'm dead. I'm not seeing, oh my goodness. And I know what it means to die on earth. You will not see your brethren again. I will not see my siblings again. I've finished. I've left the world. I've departed from this earth. So, so me, I will not go, I will not go back to the world. So me, my own has finished. That, that thought alone is a painful thought. And then the demon said to me, there are some things, life, there are some sins in your life you are committing. You know that they were sinful, but you didn't die. You didn't repent before dying. Anger, lying, fornication, all these things. And then the demon said to me, didn't the Bible say you should not commit fornication? Don't you know that sex is for married people? They need the Bible say you should not drink, you should not take harmful things in your mouth. This Bible that you don't like reading or you don't love it, this is the Bible, that, this is the word that we used to judge us. Be Muslim or Christian, you that don't believe in the Bible. The demon will say, didn't the Bible say, didn't the Bible say, at me that time, my pastor was my Bible. Anything my pastor say, I believe, I go. No time to read scripture to check it. So when the demon was saying, didn't the Bible say you should not put arm foot in, put smoking? I don't know this place in the Bible. The Bible says you should not put on this, you should not do this. I didn't know them in the Bible. I started crying. I started crying. I started crying. Why I was crying? The reality of Sister Finda preaching was coming life in my eyes. The reality of my younger brother, my elder brother, when they were telling me, what shall it profit you, Linda? A young girl like you, why are you choosing to destroy your soul? Now it's coming to reality to me. Then the demons begin to condemn me. They did the Bible say to take away the accosting from your body. And these accostings, these are jeweling, attached, this jeweling, uh, ring, chain. And then they say to me, didn't the Bible say, no, no, all liars will go to hell? He said, you people on earth only believe that lying is when you say something that is not true. Well, let me expand lying for you in the eyes of God. Now, that air that was on your head when you died, how did they call it on earth? I started crying. Because the preaching was giving me so this preaching was true. What Finder was saying. So it was true. Demon can preach more than your pastor. Demon can, can hold you when you fail one of the scriptures. They know the word of God. And then they say to me, they call it false year. False year. And they look at themselves and laugh. And say, nothing lie. Nothing make it a lie. We go to that holy city. And this is my property. I have deceived many, and I know many are coming here. I started seeing Finda message inside the devil. I regretted my life. I regretted the day I disbelieved Finda. I regretted the day I was born. I chose the way of worldliness. The demon said to me, Who told you to mark your body? 
All this tattoo, some of you traditional mark, every part. You are even putting it on your children. Uh, mark them, put meds inside their body. You will pay for those marks on your body if you don't repent of them, if you keep on doing them. And then the demon say, didn't the Bible say you should not make any mark on your body? Who told you to mark your body? Are you the one that made yourself? The one that made you say you should not mark. Are you not afraid of God? You, you are not afraid of God. Satan is the one saying that you know they fear God. God that made you say, don't mark this body. Me, I went and marked it. And then the demon said, I will continue to design your body here. And then the demon said to me, didn't the Bible say you should not put on trousers? Didn't the Bible say, didn't the Bible say, they, they were judging me left, right, and center. And then they look at me and say, you are a murderer. Then I say, no. I open my mouth quickly. I say, I'm not a murderer. I look at their faces. I've never killed anybody in my life. I was chained. My head was moving. Please, you people should believe me. I've never killed anybody in my life. Please, they look at themselves and say, you have never killed anybody. I say, no, I have never. I have never. You people should believe me. And then the demon say, you have never killed anybody. I say, I've never. And then they say, all the abortions that you were doing, the abortions you were committing, were you killing animals in your stomach? Or it was human being that you were killing? I kept quiet. Ignorance, it is not an excuse. You that you are there and say, I never know abortion was a sin. I never know fornication was a sin. I never know to marry a divorcee was a sin. Know it now because you cannot defend yourself there tomorrow. Satan say, you didn't read the Bible. I lie. I said I didn't go to school. Satan say, you are even lying here. I look for a way to corner myself for them to say, oh, she's ignorant. I thought that they would say, ah, she don't know anything. In fact, a pastor deceiver. Let, the, let her go back to the wall and correct herself. Anyhow, I twist it. They say it's not an excuse. Anyhow, I go like this. They were not looking at me. And then the devil say, I will torture you here. And then when I say, Jesus have mercy on me. He look at me and say, don't call that righteous man here. That righteous man has abandoned you, has forsaken you. He said, look at, take a look at those ones in the fire. Look at them. Some have been here for years. Thousands of years. Hundred years. You that you are just coming now, you are calling him. Those ones have been there for years. They have called on him. He never hear them. Why? When you people are on earth, when he was telling you to surrender your life to him, to walk in his way, you had in your heart and you didn't surrender to him. He too have decided to death his ears. He will not hear you from this place. So you are doomed. I cry. I started crying. I started regretting my life. I, hate, I hated myself. Why have I chosen to be foolish? Why I didn't follow Finda? What does he profit me now? Where is my boyfriend now? Where is my, my, my jewelries, my trousers? Where is my friends now? Where is my party clothes now? All these things I choose, I love. Hey, I started crying. Father, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. I will not do it again. Hey, what have I done to myself? What is happening to me? God, have mercy on me. I have seen the truth. I will not do it again. And then I started telling them, please, you people, to show me mercy. I am an orphan. Nobody to take care of me. That's why I was living this life. Please show me mercy. And then the demon look at me and say, I don't show mercy. I don't have power to show mercy. It is not in my hand to show mercy. I am here to torture you. I started crying. I started crying. I hated my life. I said, God have mercy on me. Jesus have mercy on me. Father, forgive me. Oh God, I will not do it again. And then the demon said, when I started with you, when I start torturing you, you will know that righteous man has for abandoned you. They started torturing me. I was tortured. I cried. I regretted my life. I hated Yvonne with all passion. I hated perfume. 
I hated all this makeup I do on my body, all the, all the tuning, all the tattoos, all the fornication, all the abortion. I started hating myself. I said, God have mercy on me. Father, I never knew it was like this. God, I never knew it was like this. Jesus have mercy on me. I never knew it was like this. I never knew it was like this. The demon say, when I will finish with you, you will always live to regret why you disobey God. That's why I am telling you today, the best thing for you to do with your life now is to obey God. Is to believe in holiness. You should live your life holy. Don't think about what would my husband say. We did like the way I dress. We with my friend, my office, they will laugh at me. It is better they laugh at you now because they laugh. They will not laugh at you for more than 10 years. After one, two months, they will forget, say, this one is holy, holy. It is better for you to stand the test of time now than you go and suffer in hell forever just because of dressing to please man, to please man. You will regret, I was dressing to please man. Now, I was in hell, no cloth on my body. I was naked. My friends were not there. Boyfriend were not there. My pastor that I given all my time to was not there to help me. I was left alone with only me, myself. I regretted my life. It was a painful thing to me. I said, God should be mercy. I pleaded with God with all my heart. The people that I held are repenting in dust and ashes. The witches that I hear, I tell you, God, if you send me back, I will not be ashamed of anybody. I will stand before the old world and say, I was a witch. I did like the God. I have seen the truth. People in hell have seen the truth. My mother says, Lord, send me back. I will let my brothers know that there is no way in Islam to heaven. God sent me back. But Jesus, look at my mother and say, my daughter, it is too late for you. My mother wants to come back to be a Christian. She wants to serve God now. She wants to believe in Jesus now. But there's no opportunity for her. But still there are Muslims out there that still don't believe in Jesus. I cry. I say, God have mercy on me. God show me mercy. God have mercy on me. I will not do it again. And then the demon said to me, when you were on earth, you like design your head. You spend money on your head. This is your pleasure. This was your joy. You never have time. You don't have joy to obey God. But you have joy to be tinting your hair, cutting your hair, putting attachment. Do it today. Do the way you want. You think you are the owner of your body. And then you say, what, you, what kept you on earth, what you love doing on earth, we are continuing it here. We will practice it here for you. And then he turned his back. And when he turned his back, my eyes follow him. I look at him. I saw where he was going. I saw different ions, different shapes of different instruments were sterilizing in the fire. And they were looking so reddish. And then he carried one of them. And then he turned his face towards me. And I said, God, please don't allow him to put it on me. Jesus, don't allow him to put it on me. Jesus, have mercy on my soul. Jesus, forgive me. I will not do it again. Jesus, send me back to the world. I will never sin again. Jesus, I will never do it again. I will not put attachment again. I will not keep boyfriend again. Jesus, I will not wear trousers again. Jesus, I will not sin again. Jesus, have mercy on me. And then the demon came closer to me and said, I will design your head. I will open your head. I will design it. You like them designing your head. I'm going to practice the same thing on your head. And then they held my head. I can't move when they held me like this. These demons are very strong. When they hold you, you can't move. You can't fight them. You cannot even shake one of them to say, I will fight them. You can't move. When they hold you, it's like a, a machine that press you. And then they carry the spear, a sharp object. 
And then he began to force it on my head. Begin to tear my head. Begin to bruise my head. Breaking my head. The Bible said, they will gnash their teeth in hell. They will cry their teeth in hell. When I came back, when I'm studying the Bible, when I came across that scripture, then I said to my pastor, I told my yoga word, I said, I passed through this thing they are saying here. They say, how? I told them. I said, the punishment that they give to people in here, you will not know where to quench your pain. Every part of your body will be like you are holding a high tension of current. So now I understood why the Bible said we will gnash their teeth. And then I was telling people, I said, this gnashing of your teeth, when they will be putting a painful object into your body, when they will be pieces in you like when they are pieces in cow in the market, when you will be feeling the pain fresh on your body, it's only your teeth you will use to quench your pain. When the demon is sad, this thing in my body, I was in great pain. And then I said, God! When they put it together, God! When they said, God! I said, now I understand why the Bible says we will not show our teeth. Now I understand the scripture very well. I am telling you, you will gnash your teeth in hell if you did not repent. You will cry. You will look up. You will look down. You will not see anybody to help you. You will do God. Have mercy on me. God. Have mercy on me. Nobody will quench your pain. Nobody will help you. Jesus says, should tell you, your time will soon come. Nobody will help you. If you don't repent and come out of your sin. You'll be looking at me as if I made drama. People that have died, that play with salvation, they are crying with my name. I know. Most of my friends are crying with my name. Linda said, but we didn't believe. Linda said it, but we didn't believe any member of Horimore that take this salvation to be played. And you sleep and enter into hell. You will cry with my name and say, Mommy, Linda said it. But I didn't believe I play with her word. I am telling you, before God am I, hell is not a place for you to go to. I was suffering. And then the demon said to me, who told you to mark your body? Who told you to mark your body? I said to them, there is a pastor on earth. Pastor Chris Yakilomi. I listened through TV. He said that whatever we do on our body is not a sin. He said we can mark our body is not a sin. He said tattoo is not a sin. God, have mercy upon people that are in that church. Oh, God. God, have mercy upon Christians that are in wrong churches. God. When I look at him still preaching, going up and down, I see soul listening to him. I say, how oh, will this soul hear me? I know that this man is a demon. There are many pastors that have taken contract. With Satan to deceive you, they will never tell you the truth. And then the demon said to me, We have many of them, they are working for us. And then I said to myself, I've made a fool of myself. Now I put tattoo on my body, and him is on earth still deceiving many. And then the demon said, Nobody stopped you to read the word of God for yourself. And then they carried a spear. I started inserting it in my body. As if somebody carry a knife, stretch you on the bed or on the table, and carry a knife, 
piercing it. We are inserting it in my body. I've never known a pain like this. I've never seen a pain like this. I have never heard of a pain like this. Because the pain in hell, you are not going to die. Even if they do that to you on earth, if somebody is sat knife in you, you will feel the pain after some time, maybe you will die. But in hell, they will keep on inserting, tear you, cutting you into pieces. And then there's a power that will make you whole again. And that's why the Bible call it eternity, forever. You will be suffering. As they cut off your head, how your head will come back, you will not know. When they cut your body, you will cry of that cutting. You will scream of that pain. But all of a sudden, your hand that was falling down, you will see your hand growing again. And they will continue again. And then I remember my younger sister, Finna, there was a time he told me, that I want to tell you about hell. I don't know why my sister was just busy telling me things about hell, but I didn't key into it. She said, Linda, I want to tell you about hell. If you go to hell, even if they remove your eyes, you will feel the pain, but your eyes will fix again because God make it for you to continue to feel the pain. When they cut your hand, your hand will come back so that you will continue to, they will continue to be torturing you. Then I look at Finn and say, Abba, is God so wicked? It's not true. How can they be cutting somebody and the person will, the body will come back? No, God is not wicked. It is not like that. Linda, Finna, no. Finna cried. She said, God, open her eyes to believe what I'm saying. So when I was in hell, when they will remove my body, when they will use knife to took me, when they will tear me like this, and I feel my body holding, I remember feel that. I say, I don't know. Hey, God, what have I done to myself? Fida, why you did not beat me? Fida, why? Fida, Fida, I'm in hell. Fida, I'm suffering. Fida, Fida, help me. Fida, help me. I am suffering. Nobody was hearing my cry on earth. When I came back into my body, I asked her, why you people hear my voice? Did you people you know I was crying? Fida said, no. But I know you didn't make heaven. Because I know you were a sinner. I was just crying because I know your ending will be bad. I started crying with my sister. I said, Fida, you should have handled me well. And you should have thrown me. You should have beat me. She said, my sister, this is why I was crying for you. But I want to thank God that you have seen the truth. Me, I've not even seen it, but I believe there is hell. I am telling you today, it's experience. And then the demon said to me, you like putting hot things in your mouth. You like putting hot things in your mouth. You like being high. You smoke marijuana. You take alcohol. You always have to be high. We will continue to make you high. And then he turned his back. And carried a bottle. And he brought the bottle. And said to me, drink. And then I said to them, I promise I will never drink again. Nothing alcohol will enter my mouth again. I will never smoke again. I will not say bad word in my mouth again. Oh, I will never use my mouth wrongly again. You people should believe me. Please, I will not drink it. And then the demon say, you don't control me here. Whatever we say to you here, you do it. When you were on earth, you have the power to control yourself. And then it opened my mouth. When they squeezed this my mouth, and they carried the thing, they poured it on me. When the thing was pouring on me, I came to know it was a liquid fire like acid. When they poured it on my body, my body was making sound. My mouth was making sound as if it's frying. My body, my tongue, my lip, my mouth was dropping like, like it's turning to like paper. Like when you carry a leather. 
and leather, leather and put in a fire. And when the heat is melting the leather and the fire is dropping with the leather, this is how my body was dropping. I look at my body, particles were falling down. My body was falling down. I look at myself. I shouted. I screamed. I've never seen this in my life. My body is dropping on its own. I was in great pain. My mouth, my lip, my tongue were cooking, falling down. I was shouting. I was crying. I was yelling, crying with all my veins. I was in pain. I look at mystery in my eyes. I was seeing the power of God. Because why I call it the power of God? How can my body be falling? And all of a sudden, my mouth was whole again. I said, what is happening to me? Something is going on. I can't stay here. I started crying. I can't be here. I can't continue like this. Father, I should be mercy. I can't continue like this. I blaspheme God. I curse God. I say you are a wicked God. You say you will not leave us neither for second. But see the way you are suffering us now. You are not hearing us. Our punishment is more than our sin. God, I didn't kill anybody. God, you know I was just living this life for survival. But why do you choose to suffer me like this? God, you know I love you. Jesus, I spent my time for you. God, it's not my fault. My pastor did not tell me. God, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. The demon will look at me and say, when you are tired of calling a righteous man, by the time you come to know that he have abandoned you, by the time we drop you in that fire, you will know you are finished. And then he said, they should wind me up. He said, wind her up. Then they roll the chain. When they roll it, I was suspended up a little. And then he said, stretch her. And they stretched me very well. Open my leg. And then he came and stood under me and said, this your private part was given to you for your husband alone. Don't you know fornication is a sin? Do you know how you make other people to stumble because you have a private part? The same way you were going to the hospital, they will be inserting iron in you and be killing babies. And they were, those babies were dying in great pain. This is how I will torture your private part. You will regret having private parts. And then they turn his back. I went to a place, the same place, and carried a sharp spear, very red. And then he came and said to me, look at this spear. I will insert it. I will remove. I will insert. I will remove until I get tired. That was the greatest thing I've ever seen again in my life. When we go to do abortion, they will embalm us, we will not feel the pain. I said, God, I will never commit sin again. I am sin. I am sin against you. God, I have sinned against you. Have mercy on me now. I beg you. God, I have suffered. Have mercy on me now. And then the demon say, This is just the beginning. You have just come here and say you have suffered. Look at those ones there. The fire has been their friend, their resting place. They have never rested since they came. Fire is their water. Fire is their food. Fire is their friend. Fire is their water. Everything. When I drop you there, you will know you have just started. I never know Jesus was seeing me. And I want to thank him. Because I should have been there for more than 12 years now. But Jesus showed me mercy. And said to me, I have called you to go and preach my gospel. I allow you to pass through hell. So that you will be able to explain to humanity what you see. And I allow you to feel the pain of hell, not only to enter, to see, and come out, but for you to feel the pain, and you will be able to tell them how it tastes. 
how it is. When I was there, when, I, when, they, when they dropped me, I noticed that everything about me, even if, if somebody that knows me see me will not recognize me, I was changed completely. It's like you fry a fish. But the mystery about it, my senses were correct. I know my name. I know my address. I know my, my country. I know what brought me here. I know what happened to me. I was, even when every part of my body was born on my brain, God will make you to always regret. He will not kill the sense of knowing the bad, the things you did. He will leave it in you. Even when you are burning or even when they are torturing you, you yourself will be regretting. You will be hating yourself. Why did I do this? Why did I do You will be knowing the things so that you will not say, God, you are a wicked God. I did not commit this sin. I didn't do this. You are just suffering me. Your sins will be plain before you. Your sins will be with you forever. You will be regretting why I lie, why I choose lying. I was regretting fornication. I was regretting going to our ballet. I was regretting disbelieving the doctrine of my sister. And this regretting spirit was in me. I was hating myself every second. I was hating my own self. So it's a place of torture. Your mind will be disturbed. Your body is in torture. Your heart is tortured. Your, your, your mind is tortured. You are regretting why you had it in your heart. I was carried away from that place. A man came. When I was coming from that place, the flame, I landed before a... They didn't shovel me. They didn't call my name. How God was able to locate me in the midst of those people. I want to tell you, this God we are playing with, we have not even known his power. When God went with me in hellfire, I saw countless numbers crowd of people, millions of souls in that fire, choked, shouting, falling, rolling, diving. But when Jesus stood like this, and bacon like this, he knows the person he wants to bring out, and the person will come out. But nobody, no human being, even the demons, will tell you where this person is. This way, all they know, there are crowd of people in that hellfire. But Jesus knew where my mother was. Jesus knew where my friend was. Anywhere he goes like this, he will beckon like this. He knows the person is in this, in this position. That is the mystery God. The hellfire is so wide, so big. People are more crying everywhere. Bond, you cannot recognize human being. You don't know this is a black man or a white man, but Jesus knows a white man and a black man. Jesus knows that person that I've died. My mother has died for how many years now? But Jesus knew she is in that center. And when he did his hand like this, a force like the fire will vomit the person before him. Like when they say the fish vomits Jonah. The person will come out of the fire and be thrown before Jesus. And the person will kneel down before Jesus. Every knee must bow, even those in hell. When you see Jesus, even in your pain, you will bow before him. My mother was bowing before him. And he said to me, my daughter, you cannot recognize me again. Then I look at her. I was afraid of her. What happened? Mommy, my mother has been born. Has been born. She said to me, since I die, I've not rested. I've not drunk water. I have been pain. I have been thinking of you people. I don't know what is happening in the world. I have regretted my stay. I regretted the day I was born as a Muslim. My daughter, please plead for me. 
Please tell the Lord to show me mercy. I will serve him now. Jesus, I will serve you now. I never knew you before, but I will serve you now. And I look at Jesus and I say, God, if you cannot save anybody in this fire, please save my mother. Please show her mercy. Please take her out of here. My mother died 2001. He said, since I died, I have been so free. I have never drunk water. My daughter, I am so free. I look at Jesus and Jesus said to me, only your mother you have seen here now because you love her so much. See the way you are crying. See the way you are in great pain. See the way you are pleading. But my daughter, see my children. All of them are my children. Do you know the pain I am passing through every day? And see them on earth. Many are still trooping here. I didn't make this place for them. My children was not for this place. And then they said to my mother, it is too late, my daughter. You can send message to your brothers. But for you, it is too late. As soon as God will say, it is too late, the fire will come up. It will do its tongue like a lizard. It will pitch on the person. I drag the person again. When the fire came up, I just keep my mother. I draw inside. I had a stupid inside the fire. My daughter! I said, what am I saying? What is happening to me, oh God? How will I continue with this, oh God? God, have mercy on me. God, how will I continue to bring this one with this in my mind, oh God? God, have mercy on me. I don't know how to do it. Jesus said to me, my daughter pity me. My daughter pity me, pity me. I am sending you back to the world. Go and tell my children they should desist from sin. I am God. I will not change my standard for anybody. Anyone that they in sin, they will come here. Go and tell the Muslim I am their Lord and their Savior. Anyone that did not believe in me will not go to heaven. They will come into everlasting body. Go and warn sinners. Go and warn the pastors that are preaching the wrong preaching at this era. What they should be preaching is repentance. They should bring men to the kingdom of God. They should turn my people from darkness to light. Tell them the time of prosperity. All these things they are making my children to be feeling comfortable. All this are, this world is not there. Oh. I said, God, who will believe me? Jesus, who will believe me? All these things you have shown me, who will believe me? If I talk, who will believe me? Jesus, they will not believe me. They will not believe me. And then Jesus said to me, many of my children are sleeping. I am sending this patient to wake them up. Many has been disappointed. Many have been backslid. I am sending you to recover them again. Many pastors have dropped the true gospel and have picked up the doctrine of the world. But I'm sending you, they will believe you. And then they say to me, my sheep hear my voice and they open me and they follow me. Many of my children will believe you. And then he said to me, I have established my movement on earth. I was not a member of Horrible. I've never been in their meeting. I was not a fan to holiness doctrine. Any church that preached holiness, I'm not there. So Horrible was not in me. I didn't know about Horrible, holiness involvement. When Jesus was describing this movement to me, 
He told me that I have established a movement on earth. That movement is my movement. He said to me, the name of that ministry is me. Holiness is my name. Reviving, I am reviving my children. I am moving them to heaven. And he said to me, you are going to join them because you are now going to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I am not a selfish God. All your years you spend on earth, you think you were working for me. You were not working for me. You were working for the devil. You were a sinner. But now you have seen the truth. Now you are going to work out your salvation now. Now you are going to be perfect before me. If you go back to your vomit, your past life, you know where you are coming from. Then, if I drop you there now, this time I will not show you mercy. And then they said to me, but I'm sending you to my servant. The man that I put in that movement is my son. What he will be telling you, preaching to you, if you obey, you believe and practice it. My daughter, you will be there waiting for heaven. Heaven will be your home. Because I am the one putting the word in his mouth. This is the word that has disappeared, that the shepherds have thrown away. But I am awakening the word again, refreshing the word that will save every soul to come to heaven. I have put it in his mouth. When you go, obey what he's telling you and practice it in your life. When you practice it and you believe it, my daughter, you will make heaven. And Jesus called Hori more for me. Holiness is our movement. When I revived, when I came back to life, I asked my sister, since she knows, what, she knows anything when holiness churches, Fina is there. And I asked her, do you know who is Hori more? Do you know who is Hori more? Holiness, revive her, Hori more. I was calling. She started shouting. She started shouting. I said, hold on. And then he called our coordinator our former coordinator, I say, come, God is doing wonders in my sister. That my sister has been telling you people to be praying for me. She's talking mystery. Something is going on. She, she's revived. Please, people troop into my house. I started telling them. When they put her remote message, God did not show me the man. But he said, the man that is preaching my word. As soon as they play, we went for chapter meeting. I have my encounter on Friday. Saturday and Sunday was chapter meeting, and I was baptized on Sunday. So before the baptism, when I went for chapter meeting, first in my life to sit among children of God that everybody, all the women there were tying their hair, wearing long clothes. I've never gone to a church. If I enter a church, I see them dressed like this, I'll quickly leave. I've gone to Watchman. I was not there. Before the service finished, I want to leave. So, this was my first time. If you, listen, if you watch my first message, the first testimony when I testify, you will see the suit I wear was not even my size. I don't have any cloth called decent cloth. When they were burning my things, it reached a point, Pastor Bemba was crying because they literally burnt everything. He was crying and said, how can a woman, you don't have even wrapper, how can a lady like you don't have even one long cloth? I was tying wrapper, a, a, a towel. They were burning my cloth. I was inside my room. I have to sit in my room for some hours. They went to Okereka, buy me some two, three skirts and brought back for me. Because I was so afraid of anything that would tamper with my life. I told them nothing sinful cloth will come on my body. I have seen the end of these things. When I came back, my nails were in my finger. When I did my nails like this, the devil was seeing me through the nails. I removed my nails. I passed through attack, Satan, physically. The gift of seeing followed my conviction, my conversion. I was seeing Lucifer, seeing demons, seeing attack. Pastors that I called fighting me. This message must not leave this country. When I was living in a country, they wrapped me like a Muslim to, to, to get me out of the country. Who were the people that want to kill me? Pastors, bishop, take oath that Sister Linda must die. Because of the truth God has revealed to me. And that is the truth I am telling you here today. 
Satan told them, Awake, that righteous man have revealed our secret. Witches and wizards were joining her remote to attack me. You will not tell them the truth because they have deceived many women by makeup, lipstick. These are the properties of Marine. So Jesus sent me back and he said, he said to me, go and warn those ones that thinking they are coming to heaven, they have lying tongue, anger, masturbation, gossip, witchcraft. Jesus began to name sins. All those that are putting the property of Jezebel on their body, they are dressing like they are lot. Tell them I am not a naked God. I am a holy God. Nothing artificial is on my body. I am not dressing naked. You have never had anybody say, I saw Jesus with short, with short trousers, with vests, with singlets. That is demon you saw. If you have seen any vision like that, even the sinners, even Muslims, when they will tell you they have an encounter with Jesus, they will tell you I is in his glory. How is the glory of God is covered with him. How his garment is long covered. And you, you are a daughter of God. Your skirt is short. Your breast is out. And you say you are, you are not a child of God. When they see a child of God, Jesus living in him. He said, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. How can Jesus be in you and you are naked? Your breast is out. Your back is out. Your skirt is split. Your hair is open. Artificial hair on your body. You can't serve two masters. Satan will not be on your head. And you say Jesus is in your heart. The two cannot live in one house. So Jesus says to come and tell you. I don't need to go for it. I'm stopping here. You know yourself. That if Jesus call you home now. You know that truly. You are afraid of death. Not that you are afraid of death for anything. Because you are not believed. You are not convinced. You know there are little sins in your life. But the fearful thing is that death wait for no man. Nobody knew when they would die. Only few people Jesus will tell. In fact, Jesus will only say, prepare yourself, you are coming home. The day you are coming home, you will not know. And rapture will take place at any time. Nobody knows. He only gave us the signs. And those signs have been accomplished. We are seeing what is happening in the world today. These are the signs to show that we are welcoming the rapture. Where will you spend eternity? If you die now, is it this place I am talking about? Is it this hellfire? This hellfire, you want to go and be forever. Do you want to be drinking fire? Do you want to be eating fire? Do you want to stand and lie and, and swim in fire? Do you want to be burning forever? Because of what? Because of man. Because of pleasure. Because of money. Because of position. Because these are the things that make man not to go to, he not to, go to heaven. These are the things that is making human beings not to surrender. Some people, I love my boyfriend so much. Is it because of fornication you want to damn your soul? Is it because of husband? They say this man is not your right husband. You don't want to separate? Is it because of cloth, fashion, that I cannot, me, I cannot do without Vivon. I cannot do without, uh, I cannot be wearing long, long cloth. Is it because of fashion? Is it because of friends? What will my friends say? That will take you, to, that you want to go and live forever in hell? What do you want to trade your life for? Jesus says, I should tell you. You that you will play with this word, just know that you have had the truth already. There is no escape. This message you have had here, even if you live for 50 years more, you did not follow holiness. This day, they will play it before you and say, were you not in this program? Was she not telling you? What did you say? She's lying. Nobody can die and come again. That is what your pastor will tell you. But I want to tell you, with God, all things are possible. Dying and coming back is a little miracle for Jesus. It's a little miracle. I don't know why people will be pastor and say, nobody can die again. As if it's a big thing for God. Is he not the owner of life? Is he not the one that raised Lazarus from death? So if God can take our soul from our body, go and see hell and do Isaiah 66 verse 24. Go and see the carcass and come back and tell people so they're going to be fearful thing to them. And the pastor will say, nobody can die and come again. Well, I am one of them. I have gone to hell and heaven. I have seen Jesus with my eye. My body was lying lifeless in the hand of my siblings. Will feed the lie? Even my boyfriend were there. Were they lying? They saw it. They were shaking their head. Everybody was afraid. Just like that. Linda, Linda, naughty. They were panicking. 
Immediately, the body erect and started telling her, be peaceful. Linda is passing through an experience. God is giving message for the world. And this is how they left my body till I came back to life. Everywhere, a crowd of people were looking at me. We, will we lie? Lie for what? God is doing all to save you. You are here defending Satan. It's true. Nobody can die. Please. Please, my sisters, my mothers. Whatever have hindered you not to make heaven. Is it sin? Is it love of money? You know. Two minutes. I want them. Maybe when I was testifying, they were playing hellfire for you. You were not. This hellfire clip, the people that did it, I don't know them. But the day I come across this hellfire clip, that was 2014 or 15. It was somebody that came to me, one Igbo sister. That was 2014. 13, end of 2014, she gave it to me and said, Sister Linda, all what you are saying, there is a Korean sister that drew everything. And there are some people that make a hellfire clip. See, see, since then, I said, ah, since I don't know how to practicalize it, I don't know how to dramatize it, but this video will make people to understand because it's like me and the sister went to the hell the same day. All the drawings she draw, when they are in certain, certain, somebody private bar, snake will be passing. I say I saw it and for the fornicating, I fornication torture, I passed through it. People that they are slicing their tongue for lying. Those that are putting hot iron in their anus for homosexual. Those that they are cutting their breasts for lesbianism. Those that are witches eating their body. The lady drew it. I say, I saw this department with my eye. It is true. This lady truly went to hell. I never know Jesus is taking people from different nationality. Because nobody will say, God, it's only Nigeria. It's only Sierra Leone that went to hell. Chinese people have gone there. Go to the internet. Many white people, some people their own, I don't even know. Everybody is in heaven and hell. Because Jesus said, there will be no excuse. Tomorrow, you will not say, God, I did not know. Hell and heaven, revelation is everywhere. Even you, you have gotten dream of it. So, escape for your life now before it is too late. Please, media, just two seconds or two minutes. Play for them the drawing and then the video that some people made. I think Indian people too, they did their own. Everybody is doing their own for this message to reach you. Please. Look at this place carefully and tell yourself, can I stand it? This is a man. They dramatize it. How some people live their life. Enjoyment upon enjoyment. Gambling, party, boyfriend, girlfriend, changing women. That was how he was just living his life. Now he's sick. He's in the hospital. He's fighting between death and life and death. Nobody can cure him. Doctors have given up on him to go and give account of how he spent his life. Everything is playing on his eyes, vanity upon vanity. He has died now. His souls have come out of his body. Demons have come to pick him up. They are taking him to that dark tunnel. He has entered a place he was never prepared for. He was living in the danger of ignorance of eternity. He never knew what is called eternity and a place called hell. He thought that death was just a sleep. When I die, I will sleep. Now, he has come to endless punishment. Girlfriend is not there now. Money is not there now. All the life he was, all the cars, the house, the fine boy, the big boy, is not there now. Now, he's going to suffer for all the sins he was committing. You see, Satan is mocking him now, playing all the sins in his eyes. He's not regretting. How can God made you your own life? It was just drinking, party, wedding, dressing, womanizing. You never evangelize. You never live a holy life. Some of you, you cannot pray. You cannot fast. You cannot carry Bible and win souls. That is how you live all your life for years. And this is the place. See, our souls are trooping into hell. As God is saying, depart from me. See, our souls are trooping into everlasting torment, everlasting burning. This is how people are burning. 
they themselves they are surprised how can i be born in and still living yes yes that is how god made that place so that you will always regret why you sin against him don't think of death anymore if you are in hell no death again these are people you can hear the sound of people crying this is how nobody nobody in the fire is laughing people are crying demons are busy torturing people little children that are in witchcraft that are stubborn disobedient are in hell today they are crying with their parents why they did not train them well children you are hearing me stubbornness disobedience stealing witchcraft you don't want to come out of witchcraft your parents or your mom or dad have joined you your grandmother you are hiding it you will suffer in hell like this your mommy and daddy will not be there you are stealing in the school fighting you are stealing in the house god has seen you little child repent stop your stubborn and lying you will soon enter here if you don't repent you will burn fire will burn you you will not see mommy and daddy again fire will be burning you confess of your witchcraft confess the evil women fashion will land you here disobedient to your husband will land you here haters of the house of god will land you here you that you are full of gossip criticizing your leader linda my mouth my name is everywhere now hating me because of truth you will land here all those that have you have hatred in your heart for one another you will land here you will cry unforgiveness you have not forgive certain person you will land here if you don't let go malice gossip pride some of you are very powerful you don't greet people you don't show love your face is twist you will land here because in the presence of god there is joy and liberty you can't go to heaven where you have bad hearts where your face is twist where you are proud you are boastful no you must be as a child of god your behavior must be a born again christian you should be full of love joy happiness this is it you see what they are doing if you go if you see it very closely fornicators and adulterers your private parts they will torture it you that you have married rightly you leave your husband and it and be sleeping with men or leave your wife and be sleeping with girls if you die in that act you do not stop and repent you will suffer like that this is hellfire this is people that are doing ritualists they were cooking them as they used to cook you mommy for charm in hell they will boil them they will cook them anything you like doing on earth which is a wizard that like eating people you will be eating your own self in hell that is how satan that is how jesus make the punishment you like drinking here they will be giving you fire to drink in hell you like lying your tongue they will be slicing it in hell you like watching evil they will be doing horror movie or you pieces in you they are different department you like worshiping idol you are not worshiping satan you will bow on top of a hot stone they will press your head the stone will pierce your skull they said keep on worshiping satan there is hell torture in hell torture in hell look at it you see how these people have been born you see how they are fighting to come out you see the department in hell when you go to the market you see they use knife they chopping the goats the cow just imagine this is how they are pieces in human being hell you think they are playing if you see jesus is begging he should tell you that that place is not a place of play repent 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 today confess your sin don't be ashamed of any man if you are a cultist say i'm a cultist if you are a witch i'm a witch if you are a womanizer say i'm a womanizer if you are committing adultery say i'm committing if you have envy jealousy backbiting say this confess it let them pray for you don't cover up because you are a leader in the church if you know you are having one sin or the other confess it position will not take you to hell if you are not fit for that position say please there is sin in my life i'm not fit for this position i need to be delivered come and confess your sin don't hide your sin because of position because of what people will say because of criticism of people don't bother about human being 
face your life with God. Leave people to talk whatever they want to talk. You, you have settled with God. Leave them to be doing gossip. It's them that will go to hell. You, you have confessed your sin. Let them be criticizing you. Please come and give your life to God. Come and confess your sin. Come and confess your sin. There is no time. There is no time. You don't know when you will die. There is no time. Some people have diabetes. Cancer is growing in your body. There is a sickness in you already. Maybe that common sickness will the one carry you. But a children of God, children of God don't fear death. It's only sinners that are afraid of death. The Lord wants to save you today. He said, even if your sin is dark like a coal, and will make it white like a snow. So to tell you that no matter the level of sin you have committed on earth, or you are still committing, Jesus, so he loves you so much that he will forgive you. Even if you have killed how many people in witchcraft, Jesus say, I love you, I will forgive you. And when God forgive you, man will forgive you. When I'm disgracing myself, am I bother? What people say? God give me husband that loves me with all my bad life. He still love me. That is what Jesus can do. People will say, ah, so she was like this. God say, yes, she's disgracing herself for me. I will honor her. When you disgrace Satan, God will honor you. Why are you covering your sin? Why are you not repenting? Come and disgrace the devil. Expose your sin. Little children, confess the evil you are doing. Men and women, confess it. Chapter leader, coordinator, overseers, women leaders, workers in the house of God, members of all or you are a Christian in another church, confess your sin. Come out from among them. Be a separate. You that bear the vessel of the Lord. You cannot say I'm a child of God. But you are a sinner, you smoke, you sell alcohol, you take drugs. It can never work. You are not a child of God. When they invite you for a party, you'll be drinking alcohol. Pastor is not here. When you go to the village, you commit sin. You go, you go and give Abalis money. Watch for my future. Intercede for me. You are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. You are not a Christian. You are not. Repent today. Repent. Your husband is not talking good about you. You don't bother. You are not a Christian. Your children are talking bad about you. Your stepchildren, your, your adopted children, your neighbor, you are not a woman of God. You are not a daughter of God. You are a wicked woman. Babe. You are a wicked human being. You are a business people. In your business place, you are rude. Your, your pastor is talking bad, but you are disobedient. You are a disobedient child. Repent before it is too late for you. Repent. You are a debtor. You don't pay. You borrow money. You run away. You don't pay. You are not appeasing the person. You are not trying to pay your debt. You hold here, you hold here, hold here. And say, I will not kill myself. You will kill yourself in hell. You will die in hell. You, you like carrying money, borrowing money. It is good to borrow because you don't have. But it is very sinful when you refuse to pay. You are not pleading. You are not making effort to pay. Say, I will not kill myself. And I don't care. If you want, let her carry me to police. The person will not carry to police. But there is a judgment waiting for you. There is a judgment waiting for you. You have money. They say support the things of God. You say, I don't have. You are a liar. You hate giving to the house of God. You are a wicked person. Let's be on our feet. Where will you spend eternity today? What will you say if you die now? You train your children lawlessly. A wrong way. They are not for God. They are not going to touch. They don't believe in Jesus. And you are laughing and playing with them. You think God is happy with you? How can God give you those children? And you allow these children to be going to Satan. And you say, God, I want to go to heaven. You are a selfish Christian. You are not bothered about souls around you. You don't preach the gospel outside. Please check yourself today. Let all eyes close. I am here for only few certain people that Jesus sent me to. He said, those that are, are, are still living in sin, tell them I'll be here to show them mercy. Because there is no time. I am rounding up. The suffering they are seeing in the world today is a sign of my coming. This suffering is going to be more than this. But I will only protect those that are mine. 
If you know you are not living right with God, and if Jesus call you home today, you will not make heaven. Or rapture take place today, you will not make heaven. Raise up your hands wherever you are. Some of you, you were born again Christian, but you have backslidden. You have backslide. You have compromised the standard. You need second chance again. Raise up your hand wherever you are. Please just be coming front. I am here only for you. Please, you that you are raising up your hand, you know you have sin in your life. You are battling with one sin or the other. Is it anger? Is it witchcraft? Is it masturbation? Is it jealousy? Is it unforgiveness? Up to today, that matter is in your heart. You have not forgiven your mother, your uncle, your friend, your neighbor. Up to today, that anger, that unforgiveness, it is the thing that Satan has locked in you to take you to hell. But the Lord wants to forgive you today. The Lord wants to give you a new life. You will still love attachment, weave on, make up. You still love earring. You still love chain. You still love wedding ring. Your heart, ah, come and let the Lord deliver you from that spell. Come and tell the Lord, I believe. Give me grace to continue in holiness. As you are coming, confess your sin. I don't know the sins you have been committing since you were small. I don't know, abortion. I don't know witchcraft. I don't know, but Jesus knows your sin. Begin to confess your sin. Begin to tell the Lord. You, you were born again before, but you have backslid. You have backslidden. You have compromised the standard. Anger of coming to your life again. Backbiting, criticism. Come and refresh yourself. Say, God, give me new refreshment. I want to have the Lord again in my life. Before you used to pray. Now you cannot pray. Before you were raw for holiness, now you are ashamed of the gospel. Before you used to win souls, now you cannot win souls. Those days you like going for a chapter meeting. Oh, Bible study. Oh, I will read book. Oh, I will come for, 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 for evangelism. Now you are so tired, weak. Satan has released spell on you. Come and tell the Lord to deliver your soul. Because these are the things that will weaken your spiritual life. Come and tell the Lord, revive my prayer life. Revive my fasting life. Revive my commitment. Ah, I don't like coming for chapter meeting again. Every time I complain. I am see so burdened to be listening to messages. I'm not even doing the assignment. Father, save my soul. Satan has taken the joy of God from my heart. Father, come and revive me. Come back to the Lord. 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 Tell the Lord to show you mercy. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. There is blood in your hand. You have done bad. Before you know God, you have done so bad, bad things. It's still reckoned under your name. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. Tell the Lord, say, God, mercy. Jesus, my life is dirty. Jesus, my life is full of sin. As you see me like this, I can lie. Jesus, I've done so many bad things. Hey, God, have mercy on me. Jesus, have mercy on me. I have done terrible things that I'm even ashamed to say it. Father, show me mercy. Papa, forgive me. Mercy upon my soul. Have mercy upon me. Pastor, have mercy upon me. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. Tell the Lord to show you mercy. No lawyer there on the judgment day. No lawyer there on the judgment day. There is no lawyer there. There is no lawyer there to hire. My brothers, come and play it for me. My sister, come and play it for me. There is nothing like that. There is nothing like that on that day. Pray. Say, Lord, have mercy on me. Tell the Lord, I don't want to go to hell. No lawyer there. On that judgment, there's no lawyer there. No lawyer there. On that judgment, day, there is no lawyer there. There is no lawyer there to I am. My brothers, come and play it for me. My sister, come and play it for me. There's nothing like that. There's nothing like that. On that, if you are still there, you have heard the message. 
You have heard the message. Don't deceive yourself. God cannot be mocked. Hell is real. Heaven is real. What is your choice? What is your choice? It's your choice. What if as you are going out now you die? You don't know the day you are going to die. You don't know where you are going to die. There's no lawyer there on that day. It's now that you can repent. Jesus is interceding for you. Jesus is speaking to you. Our advocate. You are still waiting. What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Come to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm tired of sin. I'm tired of worldliness. I'm tired of carnality. The Lord will forgive you. 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 In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say after me, close your eyes. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for this revelation today. Jesus, I surrender myself unto you. Forgive me all my sins. From today, my eyes are opened. Thank you so much because you loved me. Jesus, I am sorry. In any way, I've offended you. From today, I confess all my sins and all my unrighteousness. Wash my sins with your blood. Cleanse me totally. Today, I receive you afresh in my heart as my Lord and personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father. Satan, I reject you. I reject you. I have nothing to do with you. All your properties, I renounce them. I reject them. From today, I will live a holy and righteous life. Thank you, Father. Grant me the grace to live for you. Help me to make everyone at last. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name I pray. Divine Father, we thank you. Thank you for this one that recognized themselves that hell is real and they don't want to go there. Lord, they have confessed you with their mouth. They have believed you are fresh in their heart. Receive them, O oh Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every power of sin, I break you now. I break you now. In the name of Jesus, every voice of the devil that want to speak something contrary to the will of God, I silence it. I silence it. In the name of Jesus, every slow of backsliding, going forward, going back on your Christian life, I cast it out right now. I cast it out right now. From today, receive the grace. The Bible says this, the grace of God that bigger salvation has appeared unto all men. Receive that grace today. Receive that grace today to reject all ungodliness, all unrighteousness. Receive the power of holiness. Receive the power of holiness. Thank you, Father. Lord, we give you praise. Jesus' name we pray.